right, welcome, welcome. It's Tuesday. This is our favorite Tuesday, I think, out of all Tuesdays on the history of Tuesdays uh, for multitude of reasons. As you can see, we got always changed up the studio. I'm not sure if you can this point out. This is the old studio, actually. This is actually the old studio. Not sure if you can point out what's changed a little bit. Um, but a couple of things. We've got, uh, we've got, there it is. Mix A in there. Sushimi rolling in the house. Mike's here. Um, yeah. And uh, he's going to be just whipping up some magic. We, we, we actually titled the show around him pretty much. Because the show is, yeah, eating awesome things. We've definitely changed some things up. But talking about artists and artistry. And then um, within crafts, we've also, speaking of crafts, we've got a bunch of goggles Kyle and I are going to build out. Maddie Marshall's going to join us on the show. He might have brought some old relics. And then, uh, and then, Mike, we got you uh, Joseph just, Seuss. just whipping it Five up. Stars. Just, yeah. Joseph um, so, so just real quick before you get into it, maybe give us a little little rundown on who you are, what you do, and what's on the menu today. Yeah. So my name is Chef Michael Friedrich. I uh, own Sushimi Roll in San Diego. I uh, do sushi catering all throughout San Diego, uh, L.A., uh, basically anywhere. I'll go to Montana if you need me to, Cabo, San Lucas, you name it, I'm there. So, uh, also play paintball. Play on a little local team, uh, Mortal Enemy. Uh, actually, Mix, a, he's our captain. He's in the chat. Oh, yeah. yeah. To him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's my dude. Uh, great, great captain. Uh, great group of guys, you know. Uh, play those local tournaments and stuff like that and just uh, just trying to compete, man. Play, playing some competitive paintball, so. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Yeah, excited to be here. Nice. Um, so what? Uh, so what can you do? What's on the menu? How many cups of rice are we trying to eat tonight? Oh, yeah, we got ten <laughs> cups of cooked rice. Uh, cooked sushi rice. So we have some some pretty cool stuff. I got some Faroe Island salmon. Um, do some really cool rolls with that. Uh, we have some local hook and line caught yellowtail. Uh, it was caught off a of Rosarito just a couple days ago by my good friend and fishing partner Cody. Shout out to him for uh, giving us some beautiful, beautiful fillets of that stuff. Uh, we have some ground up big eye tuna. We're doing some spicy truffle tuna rolls. Uh, mm. Yeah, we're doing some that hamachi with some thin jalapenos, some kimchi ponzu, a little micro. It's gonna be, it's gonna be epic. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be epic. epic. It's gonna be epic. I'm excited. So, and and this is actually good luck. Um, hopefully, good luck for both of us, even though we play each other. But but. Uh, Chef Mike came out and did a sushi dinner for the team right before we went on to win World Cup. Mm. Uh, so that's good news. So maybe like we're gonna get, I'm sorry, we're gonna get uh, a little bit of good luck rubbed off on us from eating this. And uh, yeah, anybody here who's watching, see you might be hungry out there. Hopefully this, um, hopefully you guys are joining us in spirit on this one. <laughs> Mmm, sushi. That's right. Um, so, yes, and it's raw fish for those of you in the Midwest. Uh, <laughs> this is that raw fish food. <laughs> um, and so, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to get Maddie in here. Um, and I definitely want to ask you, Michael, throughout the, the show and the evening, a couple of questions on uh, uh, as we go. And we're going to just kind of throw some things in here, throw some things out there. Uh, if you guys have any questions specifically, um, and again, we're going to, we're going to also try to build, we've got a lot of parts here. We're going to start, we're going to, we're going to deconstruct some of these, uh, these goggles here. Um, and I actually need a tool for this. And we're going to show you some, some builds that we have. And I've got a couple behind me. Also hanging behind me is, uh, one of the hall of icons jackets. So, uh, at the NXL event, I think. You're, you're, you're staying for Sunday Summit, Summit Awards? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to be out there. We're going to be out there. So uh, Sunday night following the Las Vegas event, we will be uh, uh, all going out to the Sahara and jumping on and hanging out with uh, the biggest paintball party maybe in history. Yeah, I'm not sure. So. It's going to be it's big. Because be. Vegas already, um, as far as signups go, this is the biggest uh, NXL event outside of World Cup. So that's a that's a that's a big you know it's a big deal, and hopefully we get a lot of you guys to come out and, st and extend your stays and make sure you're here and hanging out with everybody at the Summit Award Show on Sunday night. Uh, like I said, we're gonna be giving out a lot of awards. We have um, uh, the Hall of Icons, which is Paintball's Hall of Fame essentially, uh, but for actual professional relevant players. 
<clears throat> we'll be inducting 10 players into the Hall of Icons. Everybody's going to get one of these really nice looking Hormesis jackets. It's Maybe they want to know jacket. who they are now. You know, I was kicking around the idea of um, if you guys, because I had someone reach out and he goes, you know, it was like, was kind of like didn't make the tape team. And it was like, oh man, like who made it? You know, first of all, it's kind of like busting my balls. Like who chooses these days? Like, yeah. Look, dude, I'll tell you what, I run the whole thing. This is me. Uh, uh, like I run the whole thing. Uh, I curate a long list along with, you know, I, I get help from, you know, some of the other players out there. Like, who do you think should be on this list? We got a list of like 150 players oh, and then wow. there are 10 judges. There are 10 people on the voting committee. Yeah. Right. And those players are not, I'm not even on the voting committee. I don't influence it. I don't do anything. I just say, Hey, can you please help me with this project? Yeah. And they're all across the industry. From you know heads of heads and leaders of the industry, um, big names in the industry, and um, <laughs> Boomer and Kyle eat, eat sushi. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we uh, we get a lot of um, those names, and, and I say, hey everybody, this is what I like. Just just vote for your top ten or ten in any order, really. And uh, yeah, and that's the first year we did twenty. Um, that was twenty twenty twos. We did it live during World Cup. And then, uh, and then uh, this year we're gonna be doing it at the Summit Awards. Well, here we go. A uh, uh, an icon member of himself. There he is, Matty Marshall is coming into the building. You might have to like do a little limbo here because we've got. Gotcha. While while this is happening, we've got this. This is uh this is kind of cool here. So as we're oh back 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 back. Nice job. We've crawled. Oh. Uh oh. I got this one. <laughs> good thing I didn't. The set. Good thing I didn't put the, the other. Sorry, brother. There you go, Maddie. Thanks, coming in. He said bring JT stuff, so. Yeah, yeah, he came in hot with a big old box. Dude, yeah. hot. don't throw this away. Well, didn't you just hit me up the other day and you're like, hey, I got this stuff. Uh, you like unearthed some old relics. I brought it. You did? Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. I brought a few of them. Um, so we got this, we got this, uh, this camera right here, the live sushi wow. cam. What happened to the Doghouse Studios? Bro? Dude, this is what well, well, we special, we, special we today. Felt like we would, uh, we didn't want to put Chef Michael in the in the doghouse. <laughs> we didn't want to put like look at what he's making over there. Look at what's in there. What's up, <laughs> Chef Michael? How you doing, bud? What's up, brother? I've had your food. It's delicious. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, we've got uh, ten new new players being inducted from the, the Hall of Icons. Uh, so that'll be there. We've got one with Jack, and we've got one right there. It just doesn't have a name on it. Nice yeah. little toasty in here. Um, we're gonna unearth Maddie's box of relics. We're also going to talk about the brackets, uh, what we think, the breakdowns, and you know, do a little do a little artistry work here. Um, so, in uh, before I get going, I have to. Now we've got uh, a good amount of you watching this. Um, uh, the the Brute crew, the Brute family, Laura and Blake, are are having a baby. Okay, so the Brute the Brute setup. The booth will not be there in Las Vegas. So if you need your sunscreen, which I'm telling you right now, you do. I just turned 42. I know I don't look it. That's because I <laughs> use a lot of sunscreen. <laughs> Anti-aging. Every day my age, but you know, still don't look 42. It's the sunscreen, organic sunscreen. Get it. Um, I use made code sure for this one too. I really that was good. Yeah, you posted that. Yeah, that was really I nice of you. you. I got you. Called me like a vampire, I think. Or? No, I said anti-aging uh, MVP. <laughs> But a lot of that is, uh, is uh, you know, boys coming in the first round. Oh yeah, preemptive yeah. strikes against the sun. So uh, check out Brute and their products. Uh, you go to thisisbrute.com and use code BUYBRUTE for free shipping. You might be able to scoot over. A yeah, bit. let me scoot over a little bit so Maddie can get a little closer, a little taste on this. Oh yeah. So what do we got here, Mike? Michael. That is that local sure, uh, yellowtail cut yeah, off of the three colors just a couple in days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Amarath red microgreen, some thin jalapeno, some kelp, so ryu chili oil, mm. and a kimchi ponzu. So, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maddie? Maddie? You don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime they, uh, it's just based on how good the sushi was last time, yeah, it was yeah. like, we got sushi, and I, so I came hungry. Good, <laughs> good. Yeah. I had to coax Maddie because it was a last minute uh, call. I, I should have called him last week, and we're like, why, we, why would we not do an event prep without him? <laughs> yeah. And then, um, and I was like, hey, Matt, uh, you know, I know it's last minute, but if you could come out, that'd be great. And he's like, well, let me ask you wife, my wife. And I was like, also, we have sushi. Um, Chef Michael's coming over with sushi. So he's oh, like, yeah, I'll be he's there. Like, yeah, I'll be right there. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, honey. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, let's, uh, 
Maddie, the the one of the things I want to prep you for on this this episode, mm-hmm. uh, or preface the episode with, is is artists and architects, right? Which I think you're all too familiar with, is uh, like the players out there who are the architects of the game, and then the ones who are the artists of the game. Mm. Um, I kind of want to just kind of throw that in there as we're as we're thinking about it. Yeah. And yep, here you go. Here you go. Almost there. <laughs> I see. I see. You I listen prep- a lot better when my stomach's full. Though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's fill you up. Let's fill you up. And then, obviously, you've already got the pro draw up. Let's. Uh... So good. <laughs> so good, bro. Um, we could uh, we can jump into the pro draw at any point in time that you'd like. I know you have it right there. You've got the notes. Yeah, um, I mean. Um... Well, yeah, I mean, artists well, and architects. That's a fascinating conversation. I always like starting off any conversation with the draw. I mean, everyone's, you know, talking about the draw. We got a show here, a draw. We're going to do a show tomorrow. Um, we're recording it tomorrow for Go Sports. We're talking about the draw. We're bringing some different people on. Joy Blue, Tom Martinez. Uh, but it's so interesting to, to me. I still love watching this game because of the, like, obviously I love watching paintball, mm-hmm. but I love seeing the stories unfold. Mm-hmm. And when you look at that draw or anytime we do the draw live, and, and we're laying those cards out, and it's just the my mind starts spiraling as we're putting these matchups together. Fate deciding it, obviously. Yeah. Because, you know, to me, that's that's the still the I mean, again love watching paintball, but seeing the stories and how these different guys are out there and these different team situations, and, and so I, the and, and the very first event is and the last event are always my favorite events. Yeah. And so when I look at this draw, I just my mind starts cascading with all these different fascinating narratives and stories, and so. That's why I like approaching the, you know, talking about the draw, um, because there's, you know, obviously levels to that, right? So you have the, the, you know, the innate narrative that's going on with the, all the different changes that happened, but then when you start looking at the way it's tiered, well, who's in the tier five, right? Yeah. You know, so the fact that, for instance, in in uh, Group D, the fact that Shock is down in tier five, mm. that's a problem for Group D. Um, same thing with Diesel right now. Mm-hmm. You guys are in tier four, and so that makes. Bracket A, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's like we, we could have the bracket of death conversation. Um, I don't even think you need to have the conversation. I, I don't think so either. Yeah, 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 bracket yeah. A is for sure the bracket <laughs> of death. And then, and then I just kind of, you know, we're talking about stories. I love the fact that you have, you know, it's, it's one of those careful what you wish for situations for Blast Camp, right? Okay, well, their very first event, they're going to get inaugurated <laughs> in, yeah. in the bracket of death. Well, how do they react to that? Yeah, you know, I mean, right? that's been a scrappy team. They had a very, uh, you know, I mean, they're not going to want to hear it in the sense, of, I would say, successful in the sense they did make it to the finals all those times, but they lost all those games, right? Yeah. So where are they at mentally? How much have they been preparing? Anyway, so that's just to preemptive as we get into this bracket conversation. Yeah. But and then Rab even going to Russian yeah, stream. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. yeah. So it, it makes it, I just, when I looked at this bracket or this, when this first came out and I looked at it, I was like, oh God, bracket A, because, you know, Dynasty X Factor, Legion, Diesel, and then Blast Camp. You know, I mean that. You know, with with Legion trying to make a play to, you know, to to be a, more competitive this year. Yeah. Um, in the sense that you know they had four of their five main dudes and couldn't get Smotrop out. But I mean, that was a on paper a very competitive roster. Not mm-hmm. the best year for them though. Um. So yeah, how how's you know how's Rab gonna dovetail in in that situation? So there's just a lot to talk about there and sure. unpack. You need that last piece, bro. No, that's you. This is you. I saved it for you. I just have to, I want to make sure that you. I really appreciate. We just want to, we want to make sure your belly's full so we can keep getting that knowledge. <laughs> we just want to keep being fed that knowledge. Mike, you're crushing it, bro. Keep Thanks, bro. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I mean, the, the brackets are the brackets. Clearly, I mean, do you uh, outside of bracket A, I guess, because we'll kind of while we're while we're on it here, and it's it's up here on the top of the screen. Um, outside of bracket A, let's just go 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 to bracket B, which has uh, damage, infamous hurricanes, notorious, and Iron Man. Not a great, you know, uh, decent bracket for the Ironmen because on the rebuild, Notorious is a little bit of a rebuild. I think Hurricanes are, uh, they have that, you know, I would call it a bit of a hiccup at World Cup. Oh, 100%. And they would say the same thing. I mean, 21st at World Cup. Uh, I mean, anyone, you know, you listen to Mike Bianca talk or any of those guys, I mean, they're pretty honest about how things have gone for them. They're very... uh, kind of stoic in, in their success because, yeah, they know not won tournaments, but they're making all these Sundays, and for a young team, that's incredibly impressive. So mm-hmm. I think it was a very successful year for them, but then just, you know, a World Cup was was a really rough situation. 
So they're going to be. I think they're going to come in really hungry. So I, you know, after the Hurt Cup, uh, after uh, the, the World Cup performance with the Hurricanes, that's really not a team I would like to draw. Now it's obviously going to depend on what the layout's going to look like, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the Hurricanes are. I think anyone's being honest with themselves. That's a, that can be a really tough game. I mean, they beat yeah. almost all of the. They're going to beat all of the, the the top teams at a certain point in time. They've made tons of Sundays. I mean, a seventh, a seventh, a sixth, a fifth, and then twenty yeah. first. Yeah. So and they've had all off season to prepare. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Uh, I think that um, that kind of it, and, and sitting where they're at in tier three and the infamous and damage, I, I think that's you know it's not the toughest bracket I, I, in my opinion, um, but uh, but you know they're all interesting in their own way, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. You have a new Ironman team as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It'll be it'll be that's gonna be a tough one for them. Obviously, Notorious is is that you know second team. I would I would certainly rather have grabbed uh, drawn Notorious than AC Diesel in our our group. That's for sure. Uh, bracket C, Houston Heat, Revo, who's a rebuild, uh, ML, uh, ML Kings. Kings, I was going to say Miami Kings, but they couldn't, they couldn't afford to change the name, uh, Seattle Uprising, and Paintball Fit, I think this is Paintball Fit's opportunity to, yeah. to, to, to shine here, and I'm always, I'm always rooting for Uprising, I mean, you've seen, how many times have you seen Uprising winning, I'm always and then all back. of a sudden, like, at the finish line, like, drop the baton. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, oh. Uprising has had a, I mean, I've said a lot of positive things about Uprising. I mean, I, I really like their story. They've had mm-hmm. a, a very interesting run throughout the years. And, I mean, I pretty much stayed on, I, I appreciate guys that do, you know, Ryan, you've stayed on the same team. I mean, I, yeah, we went from Ironman to Excessive, but I left with the core mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that went to form you Excessive. You all needed at the same time, yeah. Pretty much, you know, but it was but it was the core, you know, it was like you got to stick with the guys. Yes, the guys you know, that basically you, yeah, in that yes, situation when you know, I mean, it was yes, that I'm was very sure. yeah, but it was, that was a weird ass day for me when I get a, I'm in New York, and it's snowing, I'm at Mr. Yu's house, and I get like a bunch of calls all in one day. Um, you know, essentially they cut Micah. Uh, uh, he was going to form his own team. Rich was demoted from the captain. They're going to bring Shane back in, and I love Shane. So, and then Yosh was leaving to go to Dynasty. Hey, whatever, that was a crazy day. Mm-hmm. But when I had to make that decision, it was, you know, and we've had different discussions over the years. Um, what story do you want to tell yourself when this is done? So I didn't want to stick with die and be like a, you know, that right, you know, it, and in, just in the sense it was like I, Micah, Rich. We're, so we're losing Yosh. Yosh was, you know, one of our main dudes too, but. I, Micah and Rich and a lot of the guys that we ended up forming excessive with, like that was the core of the dudes running the Ironman at the time, and so I stuck with the boys essentially. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I that's in, in bringing that up with Uprising, is that uh, I they've had a, a you know they and they posted a lot about this this sort of stuff recently about how long they've had that core together. My question is is I'm just wondering you know what are they doing to try to better the performances they've had going from last year you know in right. in, this, in the sense because. You know, an 18th, a 17th, a 14th, a 15th, and an 18th isn't going to make anybody happy. So, you know, and and, and they have that core. Now, we know that that team can beat top teams. Um, I'm just hoping they have a better run of it this year. They're always losing close games, you know. Yeah, and every so, single one. Yeah. And they lost Ilya. Oh, yeah. that's I saw someone just write that. I, I thought he was... Um... He's been one of my, my favorite players to watch over there, too. Like, watch, he was playing in WC, PPO, I think. A few of the events. Um, he's good. Yeah. He's good. He's, yeah. he's, we always say you need threats and vets, right? Yeah. He's a threat. Yeah. That dude is, he was, he was really good for them. So I watched him at a WC. I think I told Ryan too, he's like stuck in this Dorito and it's like a five on three. And slowly his guys are getting shot. He's like, go down the other side. Everyone's shooting at me. And he's like, watching these guys get shot. And he's like, all right. And he like kind of, I'm like scouting on the side. And he like shrugs his sh- shoulders and he like, Fake head checks this guy, shoots a guy, shoots another guy, like just snap shoots them all, and they're all three shooting. It's like, pretty tight. He's got good technical skills, yeah. good timing, fast. Yeah, yeah. And kind of has all the tools that you need to succeed. So, sure. Yeah, he was uh, a killer for them. So, yeah, but, but looking at that bracket, um, and then ML Kings Rebel. So Rebel on a build, he changing their coach up, but you know, I mean that team's so consistently good. Interesting to see how the you know have bringing Ryan Smith into coach was mm-hmm. a Todd. Uh, how's that going to go? I think it could go well for them because um, Ryan Smith's so close with all the core guys on that team, and uh, and they're going to be hungry. They're hungry for a win, man. Heat's hungry for a win. Yeah, it's been a while, and these dudes have proven that they are that good. So when's that going to happen again for them? Uh, and their roster is really good. Connor Kelly's only going to get better, 
Is it, it's always, but with these legacy teams, the guys getting a little bit older, can everyone stay healthy, right? Because mm-hmm. Chad George, as good as he is, he'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer at some point in time whenever he retires. But he's been a bit, a bit of a glass cannon. You know, he's been hurt a lot. When he's a lot, when he's healthy and he's in there, and you know, you, you want to have Chad George in there. True. And Connor Kelly stepped up great though when he went down. So, uh, but yeah, he's he's going to be a threat to win any tournament that they plan. Rebel, big mystery, right? We yeah. don't really know yeah. Yeah. exactly <laughs> how gonna... you know losing two of their core guys. Uh, I mean, you, you know, it's, I mean, Henry Sense and uh, and Omara have been synonymous with Rebel for a long time yeah. during. A few of the during all the runs they've had on Sunday, they've had some decent runs on Sunday. So that's a question mark there. ML Kings, uprights. I think that uh, Group C on paper, just because you have your tier two team losing their two all star guys with Rebo, yeah, on paper that could be the team that or the the um, the, the easiest of the brackets, so mm-hmm. to speak, you know. Uh, and my logic behind that is just because we don't know what Rev was going to have this year. I did talk to Mike Jeffrey. He's been pretty confident. I mean, they still have some studs on that squad. But we don't know, man. I mean, when you lose two, you're starting five. That's a big chunk, man. Yeah, you know? right. So somebody, it's like next man up. Who, who's going who's gonna to carry that weight? Who is? I don't know. What do you think? Um, I think I that's why I want to watch those games. Yeah, though, you yeah, know? It's, yeah. I don't know. Where are they practicing this weekend? I don't know. You know? Hmm. Uh, bracket D, Impact, Extreme, Lost Corey. Um, ASG aftermath the Corey Bears. and Silas yeah. Corey and Silas yeah. sorry Corey yeah. and Silas um, uh, aftermath and I was trying to pull up the stats I don't know what I did with the stats page um, but uh, Corey I think had the most wins out of anybody I think mm. he was at the top of the wins count do you Corey's have you the stats? I think I have it somewhere <laughs> um, I, I can pull it up on my phone uh, and then send it over here um so, yeah, I don't know. Um, New York Extreme, they, that's such a weird thing, too, for both those guys to leave. Right when you're, like, finally, what was, what was NYX's uh, stats there? Uh, sixth overall. Uh, other than Cup, again, another anomaly mm-hmm. for them at Cup at the 13th place that they took there. Well, it was not it was an anomaly, but it wasn't. You know why they took 13th place? Why? Because they won the exhibition round. Yeah. Party too hard, thinking they were the best in the world. Let's go to Charlie's. Let's boys. go to Charlie's. You won the exhibition round. We've got this in the bag. No one knows. Everybody sucks. Yeah. Well, it, count your chickens. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think they were expecting big things out of themselves. Obviously, coming off that the win in the seven oh, three situation. Um, you know, at Cup they they beat the Bears by three, lost to Aftermath by one. Beat up on the Saints really bad. Mercy Roll win there, and then lost to Rebo. Um, and the 2-2 two two record wasn't enough. But, mm-hmm. and I think losing Corey Hall, and this is, look, I mean, this is just one of these situations. I mean, Ryan, you've been on Dynasty for eight or nine decades now, you know? So, uh, <laughs> and you've had to, you've got, you've gone, you guys have gone through a lot of dudes over the years. So uh-huh. it's like when you, Angel has to, you know, when you don't have Angel anymore, okay, who's going to play Snake for it, right? It's, it's one of those questions. So for New York Extreme, I think that, when you look at that core roster, they still have a lot of killers. I think another big thing with, with uh, New York Extreme is, same with Chad George with Heat, right? It's that how healthy and how present will Jerry Carl be for them this year? I mean, if Jerry Carl is there at all, at every event, and he's healthy, then New York Extreme is going to be, not not that some of the other guys didn't step up when Jerry wasn't there in the snake, but we're getting something flaming right now. So let's, get, let's get a cam on it. Let's get, let's, get the, let's get the cam on it. Let's <laughs> hear it. Oh, the torch. Oh. Watch your hair, Kyle. Mm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, on, we're flaming. There yeah. we go. Look at that. Sheesh. Yeah, so, uh, again, this is why it's fast. I love the first event, man. Mm-hmm. The first event is always so fun uh, just because there's all this expectation. We'll get to shock in a little bit. So people are asking about shock, but... Uh, there's just a, you know, and, and so a team like Extreme. Extreme did the best they've ever done last year. I mean, because if you go back a year and a half ago, Extreme was on the, preci- the precipice of potentially getting relegated. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if we go midway through you know, uh, the season before in 2022, and we were having the discussion in shows about, well, oh my God, what happened to Extreme? I mean, you know, they're, they're having a lot of big problems. I mean, they were at the bottom of the barrel and then they head into this year and they were one of the best teams out there. You do their plus minuses, which I don't have in front of me, but I yeah, they're up there. I was just a little bit, but they, looking at that. Yeah. yeah they're, 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 but their plus minuses throughout the year. I mean, New York extreme was beating yeah, people up in the prelims, dude. Like, 53 plus yeah, 51. They were just mur- murdering people in the prelims. 
Uh, I keep then, forgetting about Thomas too. Going back to or yeah, going to Thomas, Thomas, Thomas Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. so the, the, and look, Thomas Taylor still has a decent amount in the tank. Uh, another guy now who's been playing for a long period of time that still has it. Uh, and I think that this could be because with you know infamous with infamous it was it was like when we we're sitting there doing the you know these iconic awards that we're going to be doing uh, the summit awards mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and. <clears throat> looking at who t- to nominate in, but it was hard for me to even put anybody up on Infamous not that they didn't deserve it in some way but there was, but they had a lot of contributions from a lot of guys if you look at their D side they had like tripled up deep dudes over there between right. Schrader, Brusselback and Sam Silver right mm-hmm. you know so it's just I think Thomas is probably going to get a D especially with the departure of Corey though they play different positions but I just yeah I think it, it could be uh, a good couple seasons we'll see how much I mean, and again, with Thomas, it's just like how long can he stay healthy, right? Because he's been fighting through lots of different injuries throughout the years. Dude, snake back for 20 years. Yeah, so, which is impressive. Um, it's very impressive. But so, but with Extreme, I, I think one of the big questions is how, losing Corey, how much is that going to hurt him? Because Corey Hall was a starter for them. He was incredibly productive for them. He did amazing. Oh, Jesus Christ. Nice. Here we go. <laughs> uh, quick pause. Yeah. What do we, uh, Chef Michael? What do we have here? So we have more of that local hamachi, a uh, little citrus chili paste, a spicy truffle tuna roll. Starting over here. Yes, sir. Okay. And then we have a uh, berry style salmon, uh, crispy onion, and then a lemon sriracha aioli torch. Sheesh. And these flowers are edible as well. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're about that life. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure. Just making sure. Maddie's hungry. Maddie's hungry. Flowers. Smell the flowers. Take it out. Uh, my time with some okay. flowers. They look pretty though. Nice, nice presentation. So I know. Yeah. Save them for Thanks, chef. Well, <laughs> Thank yeah, you. My pleasure. Okay, um, let's go. I want to ask both of you at the same time. Whoever doesn't put the pieces. Okay, let's go, Maddie. <laughs> Aftershock or impact? What, what do you mean? Like who's win? Who's gonna, who's gonna play? They're gonna play each other, and they're gonna they're gonna shoot each other. Each other. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? I, I mean, I think the safe bet is impact, uh, okay. because you know impact is. I don't know. I'm going up to practice this weekend. We're doing uh, just some, you know, obviously as we always do for Go Sports stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think impact is still hungry, uh, coming off of their World Cup mm-hmm. with that second place, and you know, obviously the third place at the first event. So I, impact continues to be hungry, and I think that those guys are going to start to find as. Or already they already have. I again on paper, Impact should win that game because Shock just got their the band back together. Okay. And and Kyle, as you well know, you know it does it, it sometimes take time. Yeah. As we move through the year, I mean, if they played the if they played ten times throughout the year, I don't know. That could be a discussion or an argument. But I think that the spread would probably have to be. I'd probably give Impact by two or three. Yeah. In that first game, I think that's a safe bet. I'd say so. Uh, but. Shock is going to come out swinging, and they're going to be very hungry to uh, to prove themselves with this new squad. And they got a great coach, they got a great owner, so who knows? But yeah. I think the safe bet would be impact by two. That would probably be a okay. Safe. That was very detailed. Um, Kyle, shock or, or I'll let you swallow this one, Michael. Shock or impact? I'm going shock. Shock gets one there. Yeah, it's just team I grew up with, you know. Really? Yeah, it's just. Watching, you know, all you guys compete and stuff back in the day, back in 2004 and five, you know, it's just... Uh, Where are you from? Mississippi. So okay. I started playing okay. back in, yeah, okay, before, I see it now. swap paintball back in the day, you know. Oh, yeah, um, yep. And, uh, you know, Aftershock, I think I had an Aftershock, what was that, gun, DM6, DM5 or something like that? I think they were sponsored by Die at the time. Yep. I was like, yeah, dude, Aftershock, that's, that's, that's where it's at. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with... With aftershock, I'm a fan of Nick Sloviak too. So. Oh, look at that! Nick's got a Nick's got a, a fan <laughs> here. There he is, right there. I love Nick Sloviak. Nick Sloviak yeah. yeah, everybody loves like Nick cool Sloviak. Guy. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, he's he, a killer too. He chooses steaks though. He's a steak guy, not a, okay. not a sushi guy. Um, Dizon says shock, baby. Let's go. Um, what do you think? It's gonna be tough, what? but I'm gonna give it to Impact just because they didn't really change too much from last year. Well, Shock's the fun, emotional pick. Yeah. Mike, obviously, you got some skin in the game because, you know, growing up watching them. And, of course, Shock has the talent to beat Impact. But Impact is a very refined game. They're coming off a second-place performance. Yeah. Not changing the roster up. I mean, they're probably going to be pretty good right out the gate. They took third they in the did last lose year. Matt. 
Mm, okay. Okay. Mm, don't forget oh, about yeah, that. They no. didn't lose that. Yeah. They got Mikey. Yeah, and they got Zoop. Or sorry, they got uh, Urena. You guys. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Mm, conveniently forgot about that. Right? Um, I texted him this weekend because well, he texted me and said happy birthday, and I said, thanks, dude. Please don't bonus ball me this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey loves the bonus ball. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's what you told him, or that's what he told you, or actually you? Well, he I, he said happy birthday, um, oh, and I said, Nick. yeah, shout out to shout out to Nick, thank you, Nick. Um, I said, Mikey, please uh, please don't please don't bonus ball me this weekend. <laughs> every, team, every team's got a couple. Well, we got, got it, man. Got it. Yeah, Maddie looks great. Alex says, Alex says you look great. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate it. Love you. Alex missed practice this weekend oh. to go to, to Billionaire Island. Also, uh, well, we got the um, Great American Paintball book mm. dropping, too. I saw I saw the proof today. I actually brought, um, well, I wrote a piece about Hyperball for it, and I got a little bit of, you guys want to hear a little bit of it. Okay. Uh, do you guys want to hear a little bit about it? Just a tiny bit? Just a little? We can do it later, but after we finish the... <clears throat> I just, uh, I wrote an article, well... Um, Sam Al- Sam Altman wrote my article for me um, about uh, playing paintball in Europe. You had somebody write your article for you? <laughs> Chat GPT. No, no. Isn't that what the kids do in school now? <laughs> yeah, imagine having a Chat GPT <laughs> write an so. article about uh, how to play paintball. <laughs> Joking, dude. <laughs> I think they yeah, try no, to put no. some safeguards on it, but I don't know how, because you could just be like, write this article, but don't plagiarize it. Well, I just don't know that it knows much about paintball. You ask who like the best paintball player in the world is, I think it tells you. I forgot what it was. I think someone someone sent it to me. It was like it was. It like, did think our show was uh, by Mouse Spica and Lane Wright. Yeah, Lane. He did, it did say the Spica and Span show was about was was hosted by Mouse Kyle Spica and Lane Wright. Yeah. So AI yeah, just nailed it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nailed that one. Um, I don't know about shock and impact. Uh, what do you got, bro? I think I think impact takes it because for the same reason uh, that you had said, uh, also just slightly on the cohesion, but not by much. I don't know. You said impact by two. I, you know, I think it's going to be a tight, a very tight match. I think shock's going to do really well. I don't think I think they will too. I don't think it would shock. Shock, no pun intended. Oh. Uh, I don't think it would, uh, you know, beguile anybody if, uh, <laughs> if all of a sudden shock showed up and was good out the gate, but. You do have a situation where, where you know, A Rod played last year, but took a little bit of a break. Thomas Kim took a little bit of a break. You're getting the best uh, Corey Hall and um, and LJ that they've had. In those guys are at the pinnacle of their skills right now. I'm not saying they can get better. They can't get better, but I mean, dude, LJ and Corey were really good last year. So, yeah. yeah. You know, and and then obviously the rest of the roster is pretty. Pretty sweet too, so I don't think it's going to um, you know surprise anybody if they show up and they're good immediately. It's just typically speaking, mm-hmm. AC Diesel last year, excessive when they first started. I mean, there's lots of different variations of this throughout the years. We're talking about the first event. If we're having a longer discussion about the entire year, that's a different story. But but yeah, Shock's highly motivated. I I can't wait to see what they're gonna do. It's, Arguably, if it's not the most compelling story, it's right up there with all the all these other compelling stories that we have in the twenty. I forget is that that it would be the first game though, right? The one seed always plays. Um, I don't know. Let's look at. Uh, it, isn't it usually right, like? Go, we got schedule, baby. We've got the schedule. Oh, there the schedule. Is mm-hmm, it? Mm-hmm. Let's go um, bracket D right here. Um, I don't know if that was bracket. aftermath. So aftermath aftershock. Okay. Okay, guys. That's Sh- good for Shock, though, because uh, having Shock warm up against Aftermath. Ooh, I see where you, th- you think is going to win this one. Well, no, I'm just warm saying. Warm up. You hear that, Mario Trio? I know you're watching. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's not what I'm saying. My point is, is that if we're having a discussion of who's going to win ver- Impact versus Shock, mm-hmm. having Shock get a game yes. against anybody, it doesn't matter who it is, is good if you want Shock to win that game against Impact. Mm. Now, Aftermath... Talk about impressive performances. Seventh place at World Cup, pretty awesome. You know they did play really well there. So yeah, and they're getting better. Yeah, and they're grinding, man. Like that team grinds. Like everyone talks about how much fit plays, and they do. They play a fit. A, a, a fit plays probably more painful than anybody, and that's part of the keys or one of the keys to success. But after, or, uh, yeah. but uh, aftermath plays a lot of painful too. Pitbull. What do we got, Mikey? So we're that Faroe Island salmon uh, jalapeno torched uh, smoked cupioli. 
uh, kimchi ponzu togarashi. Let me let me ask you this: What exactly is Faroe Island salmon? So it's the salmon that's uh, it's sustainably uh, farmed out there. Okay. Uh, Faroe Islands, uh, Norwegian, Patagonia, all those. If I can if I can find it and locate it, that's what I usually buy. Okay. Uh, you know, it's sustainably harvested. Uh, they do a really good job on uh, minimalizing. You know, the types of feet they put in them and mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, so is it a, is it a farm salmon? Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, but Faroe Islands, north of uh, the UK. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's, it's just Faroe really Island. fatty, fatty salmon. Uh, well, clean on the back salmon. end. It's yeah. I'm a huge salmon guy. Me too. He's not. I'm a I big am. salmon guy. I don't know, but you don't like to eat sushi. <laughs> I don't salmon eat a lot of raw. Because your salmon. mom's a nurse, and she said the worm conversation. But you know, whatever. Anyway, so that's the great I'm, thing I'm about, the salmon, about this farm stuff is um, less parasites. We also cure it in house, so a um, lot less parasites. Worry about. Um, yeah. Love that. Get after it. I love that. Oh, Chris, thank you, you so much. Of course. Of course. Of course. Uh, so, Impact and Shock played each other last prelim game, which I think does throw a little bit of a curveball, too. For both teams. And, yeah, but I think it I, m- might play into the favor of Shock more so than Impact. Well, if I was Impact, I would want to play... Well, whatever. I mean, you have to be. If you can't get through shock, you, you, know, you got to. As we well know, doesn't yeah. matter. They rack them up, right? Yeah. But as an analyst sitting there and looking at it, um, sorry, I just have a thing about talking with my mouth full. <laughs> I yelled at so much when I was a kid, <laughs> talking with my mouth full. But if you're looking at it from an analyst perspective, the it gives. If I if if I was a betting man and I was putting money on that game. Having impact play shock right out the gate, impact's going to have a better chance. Okay, I think they've been together longer. Right. You know that's right. a it's a and I, know, I think that the that's pressure a huge moments. Hit, yeah, they've just been track. together for a long time. Man, I'm just Edmonton impact impacts. I mean, they won two events in a row not that long ago. Last year, no wins, but a third and a second. And uh, I and I so Kyle, I kind of do agree with you that. It, if Shock gets on a run, let's say they win their first three games, mm-hmm. that's they're going to. But if they're feeling it, got guys kind of getting in the vibe, then you know that's going to also give the organization of the team a little bit of time to start putting their fingers on. Okay, well, who do I need to say the right things to? How? Who's doing? You know, obviously, the, you know, this is your X's and O's, motivation, yeah. logistics, um, you know, pit flow, all these certain things. Like Impact's already got that all down. Yeah, you know, so. Um, Shock's going to have to, they've been trying to figure it out, but mm-hmm. these are just, that's the learning curve. That's just the way it is. Yeah. So. <clears throat> uh, Chef, I'm assuming that you're going with Shock across the board, all four, off Shock. Oh, yeah, you know, board. I like to root for the underdog, too. I mean, you know, I do, I, too. I feel like they're the underdogs right now, so. For sure, for sure. Um, okay. That's that's where I'm at, you know. It's just uh, watching that whole process of them building that team and following the, uh, the social cuts of, like, Tom Addison, like, Getting everything together and stuff like that, you know, it's just, you know, I, I wish them the best. I think it's, I think it's really cool that they're bringing back a, a kind of resurrected a team that's from the past and. Um, it's a great paintball story. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's yeah. really cool. And we need that. That's the thing. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah. Look, we all love paintball, guys. Anyone that's here listening, anyone that's gonna watch this, you're prop, and maybe you're not a diehard paintball fan, but we all love the paintball. But having captivating stories when people are having that again, the hashtag real paintball game. If we're not telling amazing stories to the world. We're having, it's not even just the telling part of it. It's the amazing stories need to happen, and then we got to capture those stories. Right. And, and well, so it is captivating. It's, and, and so I just, yes, I, I, I totally agree. Ab- absolutely. I, I think it's, so, it's, I think it's great. You know, I, I was bummed when Shock lost. I was, I, I, I was bummed. When they, when they left, when they, they left, left the league. Me too. Yeah, that yeah, was this a is heartbreaking like those day. Days. Um, absolutely. Because obviously, like, Shock wasn't, I, I was the Ironman fan. Growing up, because I was from California, I know we tried to get you on the team, but you just wouldn't come. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but you definitely need all those teams and the rivalries, and like it was just like just a legacy team that you need. To, that you, and then, which is funny because I have a text message to Hot Adams, and I said, "Don't f this up," you know, like because obviously you, you worry about guys coming in, but obviously Todd isn't just some guy coming in. He is the guy. He was aftershock. He is aftershock, and it's like it's great that he is at the helm, mm-hmm. and he's like, and he cares. 
you know, because we've done, he cares. And, and he's incredibly passionate about it. Um, and, and I, you know, he's definitely put more into paintball over the last, you know, half decade, five years or so. I've been getting more and more into it. And I've actually worked with uh, the, the Femmes uh, with him. Mm-hmm. And it's it's great. I think it's, what he's doing is awesome. I mean, he, he went, and he went big. You know, he's got European team. Uh, he's got the U.S. team. He's got the women's team. Yep. He's got the kids team. Dude. Let's go. It's like tearing it up, man. Let's go. Yeah. We played both of those teams this weekend too, Fit and Shock. Oh, you did? Yeah, and Shock was uh Shock was out there, I guess, Thursday and Friday too. We played we played Saturday, Sunday. So that was I would I don't mean to interrupt, but yeah. I was kind of just wondering I completely forgot about who that. has played them, how are they looking? Yeah. Uh top we got Todd coming on the show tomorrow, so go sports. Uh I'm not sure when it'll be out, maybe early next week, but I wanna pick his brain about that. Uh yeah, that's I'm just like who's played them and how they look at you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean I would say you know we played we played them Saturday and Sunday, maybe we won the broader side of points between them on Saturday and Sunday too. They came out like super strong, uh, played really well, and they showed a lot of depth and range of playing styles, which was cool to see. Yeah, um, like you know playing the slower game versus playing the aggressive game. What layout were you guys playing? Uh, we played a. Um, it was like a hybrid of Texas from last year with some added beams, mostly on the Dorito side. Got to add those which, Thank you, sir. Thank you. In, in my opinion, uh, I, I liked it because it was you could. It didn't. It didn't feel like it changed too much, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like it's going to be as realistic as what we're going to see the fields like this mm-hmm. year of like chaos and switches need to be made like very quickly there was you're able to kind of control th- how things go on this field and there wasn't too many holes um which i don't think it's going to be i think it, there's going to be a lot of holes uh, in action how did thomas kim look thomas kim look decent i don't um because when he walked away play. he was just kept getting better better yeah better. Like, he, yeah he was badass like you know got getting paid like he was doing really good things and then obviously had to walk like his regular life still looked pretty pretty steady um i didn't see like too many like super flashy things um yeah nothing like nothing that really like stands out to me yet but um still still got it uh but they i think the biggest takeaway was like they did show a lot of range uh in playing styles um yeah even more so maybe than i would say fit fit might have played more consistent over the entire weekend um and like really tailored and strong to like their style, uh, which I also think they're going to do really well in the event. I can't wait to see how they <coughs> play. Yes. Because they were there before, and then had to go down, mashed on everybody, yeah. on everything, and they came back up. So I'm, I'm, I really am excited to see how Fit does. And then Shock, there's every single one of those guys says, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> but I... I was I talked to Joey today because we're going out to play damage this weekend. Mm-hmm. It's us, New York Wrecking Crew, and them, but like a three way practice. And uh, he was saying the same thing. He's like, man, I think uh, Fit might do pretty well this, um, at least two for the first event. Because um, we we're talking about the concept of like how big it also manages when you like know how to win. There's like a different mindset of like going the extra mile to like secure that win in those close games mm-hmm. uh, is why you see a lot of like why the veteranship in paintball like those top 30 guys are kind of stayed in that rotation and yeah. know how to win and even when the team a few years ago like ac dallas mm-hmm. got close still there was like they were never able fully to get it um but fits going into the pro league with that mindset mm-hmm. of like and they're putting in the work they know it's going to be an uphill battle but they're also like like we, we win like that's what we do so applying that I love that that's an interesting though part of the mindset right I mean yeah. when you're on a team that's doing really well and people always say oh what do you, well hold on can, can we get yeah. a read on this beautiful display oh, yeah. of sushi prowess that is a Futomaki roll so mm-hmm. meaning large in Japanese <clears throat> okay um, a little bit of everything on that one micro cilantro <laughs> chili garlic uh, spicy mayo eel sauce spicy tuna crab cucumber avocado <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, and dress with kimchi ponzi, of course. Mm-hmm. AKA known as the kitchen sink bowl. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Chef Mike, let me uh, let me ask you real quickly. When you 
Do you like when you're coming up with this stuff? Is it kind of like things that you've had in the past, or you're like these taste great together, or like what is what is it like? How does this come to yeah come to um, life? You know, it's a little bit of both. Uh, I've had it. I've you know had the same flavor profiles. I'm a big I like big bold flavor, mm -hmm. but I also like something to kind of cut that like boldness, and that's where like the the microgreens come in. That cilantro or um, having that little bit of citrus kind of cut stuff out. You know, the kimchi ponds has got a nice uh, zing brightness to it. So, mm. yeah, so it's, uh, you know, I, I like to uh, explore in sushi and try new things. And I, I feel like, you know, I just, I try it. I'm, this, I'm a certain person, like, I feel like you, I try everything once. I'll try everything once before I, I can't knock it, you know. You. Got to try it once, so. Okay, then that, okay, so... <laughs> Real quickly, real quickly, what's your favorite type of, or piece of sushi, and your, then your favorite fish? Type of sushi is or, what like I'm holding right here that I'm about to dress up for you guys. This is nigiri. Oh, yeah. I'm simple, you know, I, this, little ponzu, and some fresh wasabi. Okay. I'm a, I'm, I'm a happy camper. Favorite fish, whew, man. You know, I have to say is the yellowtail. I built my business around the yellowtail. It's my logo. Um... You know, out here in Southern California, we fish a lot and uh, we catch a lot of yellowtail, and it's it's the bread and butter fish of San Diego. Very you know, fresh SoCal. too. Yes, yeah. you know, and you eat just, yellowtail, you know, it's probably yeah, it's fresh. just the best, man. They fight great. They're plentiful. Um, they taste good. They taste great. Yeah, They're great table good. fare. So uh, that's definitely my favorite. You know, I'm a big salmon guy too. I'm a big bluefin tuna guy. They're just hard to get. They are hard to get. And we catch them out here as well. We, you know, we've gotten some big ones. But, you should uh, take Ryan. He loves deep sea. I know. <laughs> we can talk about it. You're coming with me. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> You're coming with me, I'm dude. I'm not playing in the woods. And I'm not going deep sea fishing again. <laughs> it's it's okay. Vibe. We still love you. It's a vibe. What's sure. your least favorite fish? My least favorite? You know, I, my least favorite fish? Crawdads. No, I love crawdads. <laughs> Dude, I, I love crawdads too. Cell. Tadpoles. <laughs> crawdads are delicious. Tilapia. I think it's just a yeah, terrible Yeah, tilapia fish. is trash. Yeah, dude. you know. Tilapia is trash. Yeah, I agree with that. What you got against crawdads? <laughs> I, was just, I was just trying to think of it. I have a lot against crawdads. There's you do? Way too much work to get that little bit of it's nug not, out of Oh my god, I just had this argument. You're eating crawdads, you'll somebody. like this. You'll appreciate this. It's not that much work, dude, when you go and open up a crawdad. It's crickets of the sea. Eating crawdads is a lot like playing Ten Man. Fun, dude. Yeah. You get on the airplane, instead of your, pink, your nails being pink, they just smell like crawdads. <laughs> yeah, and, and, Cajun, like, and Cajun spices. <laughs> Would that be a really I funny prank? I don't want that on my fingers when I go I'm to bed I'm not scared of pink paint on my fingernails or Cajun spices. <laughs> That'd be a really funny <laughs> prank shit. to bring like trying to have those, a good time out here, bro. That, right. <laughs> that greasy bag from Boiling Crab like on a plane with you and like set it oh, up. Oh, like, eat that? Eat that. that like, <laughs> next yeah. to Probably going to get some people like, call them crawdads. We'll you know. call them crawfish in the south. Mm. Uh, someone's going to get us. Someone's yeah, going to get us. Yeah, yeah, guaranteed prawns. Oh, yeah, we're having it. from the south. Uni. Christopher can, uh, really? Christopher does not like uni. I've actually Cat never fish. had uni. Uni's okay. It's okay. It's the uni the loogie. Yeah, my problem with uni is I don't know. This is like the more exotic sushi. sushi. I, don't know, I just again, like you said, man, yellowtail, salmon, yep. whatever tuna. Blue, well, there's all these different things that are so delicious. So if I'm gonna sit down and eat a meal, like I'll eat some of the exotic stuff occasionally for fun. But I don't crave it, and it's just more to kind of do it for the experience. It's because it, I feel like I'd rather just eat another piece of salmon, you know, right. or, or another piece of yellowtail, or yep. another piece of bluefin. bluefin or, thing is, you know, bluefin's expensive and relatively rare these days, so it's kind of harder to get. Absolutely, like my my. Dude, too. we went. We went. Um, speaking of summer camp, I think Nick Sloviak in here says, "Get him out to the summer camp and have him cook out there." Mm. So we did. Um, we did a ten man a couple years ago, and then the weekend after was a summer camp. I'm gonna get you, get you guys to see what's going on here. And um, we went bluefin fishing out in Boston. Where the wicked tuna is. Wicked where tuna. The wicked tuna. Where, is? No, where the wicked tuna are. Oh, you know, okay. like where they yeah. are. You know, like that's where they are. We caught two of the biggest ones, uh, tunas of the entire season. I think one of them was 900 pounds. You caught a 900 pound tuna? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. All, we Why all, did you not tell me about this? Well, it was lame. Fucking epic. It because, was lame. Just listen. Listen to the story. Crane? 
Yeah, you basically yeah, he's basically you're strapped into the seat and you have a crane. Where's the camera? So, this is how salty he's getting these days. He catches a nine hundred pound tuna and he's like, oh, Nick, how big was, was that lame, tuna? Slow yeah, how lame. big was that tuna that we got? Lame. So we catch this tuna. It takes like several hours to get it in. We're we're switching off, right? Laval gets a little time. I get so a little it's time. lame because it was too hard. No, 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 no. This is what was lame about it. We get it up to the boat and they go, "All right, well, we got to drag it behind the boat to let its gills like cool down a little bit because we don't want to overheat when we let it go." I'm like, "What do you mean, let it go?" Mm, okay. And they were like, "They're like, oh, well, that was you know, it was, that was the sport part of it." I was like, "Well, the sport was kind of not as cool because we, five of us like kind of tag teamed this thing, and it was like." You gotta just go until you feel like you're kind of done. Yeah. And then you gotta like let the thing go, which I'm all for the catch and release thing and sustainability. And they're like, oh well, we just can't sell it. And I'm like, well, hold on. Like they, we just don't think there's enough restaurants that will buy that much tuna. That's why we let it go. And I was like, why don't we vacuum seal that thing and we're gonna eat bluefin for the rest of my life? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Aren't the yeah. big ones <laughs> worth like three hundred thousand dollars? Like Some big... of those Japanese ones, yeah. No. Yeah, even out here, you know, there's a good market for them. Um, shoot, up. my second year anniversary running the business mm. uh, on on Sunday, I went down. We got the first bluefin of the season, mm. and uh, the retail on it was forty dollars a pound. Yeah. You know. Well, luckily I don't have to pay that, but it's <laughs> still. Well, that's what I'm saying. When you catch an eight hundred pound, you know. It's, so out here we have a, a Pacific tuna, the Pacific Ooh. bluefin. It kind of travels from here, that really Japan, good. back. Yeah, this one. Come right here. Sorry. They get to like around the three three twenties. I think there's some three fifties caught a couple years ago. Yeah. But um, yeah, I do love me some bluefin tuna. That Otoro is something different. Yeah, yeah. that's like yeah, that, that, that <laughs> yeah. definitely, as that's they say, it's different. different for what do you think of that nigiri? That was outrageous. I haven't got there yet because um, I like the, the lemon, the uh, kitchen sink roll, because I can't remember the real name of it. <laughs> That unamaki. So, yeah, unamaki. So much going on, but wow, you were right. Delicate flavor. Yes. Um, it kind of all just mashes together, and I love the uh, the greens on top. Dude, you're just crushing this. I, for sure. I said, uh, I, I think, I think stock the stock in fish is going up right now because I've seen about. I saw one person. I think I don't know if it was Doc. Someone was like, the the sushi in my town is really dodgy and suspect. But I think I'm gonna have to go for it tonight. There you go. Yeah, I wonder how many people uh, <laughs> are getting sushi tonight, sushi tonight after. Seeing that still. Yeah. That's cool. Bluefin is amazing. Yeah, yeah, bluefin bluefin really is amazing. Is. Um and so <laughs> this is this is all this is all pretty uh pretty outstanding. Um oh yeah. That's, there's, we got more on the table up there. So uh Biria tonight, that's good too. Biria is good. Um and yes, we did watch them release it. Uh <laughs> And mm. it was during COVID, so it was like 2021. Mm. So I guess a lot of the Japanese restaurants, sushi restaurants, were not open again, and so they were worried about mm. like having it go to waste or whatever. I'm like, we got a little, we did it, oh, yeah, a little heart, a little, a little bubble again. Uh, so yeah, that's why we had to release both of them. We caught like I think the other one was like around 700 pounds. It was big. There was a lot. There was a lot of possibility there. We got pictures of it somewhere. That one was really good. Dude. That one was good. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Um, All right, where, where are we going so yeah, yeah, we're we're just kind of going about uh, to to we we're just talking about a lot about shock and you know and, the, and that sort of stuff. So oh, just real quick before we leave shock, yeah, because yeah. again, one of the more captivating stories going on here. I really am interested to see how Corwin Weber does with shock. So level one of the reasons that level did as good as they did. Yeah, you got Sam who got picked up from Infamous and. Danny Schoenauer, who's now on your team, yeah, him. but and but they had a lot of guys that were contributing in those start. And they probably have like seven, eight guys that had huge moments at certain points of time. Some of them more than others. And one of those guys is Corwin Weber, but he blew his knee out skiing oh, that's at right. the beginning of last year. So we didn't see him last year, but he was. You know, it's, as you well know, he, he plays a two position. Uh, he kind of a plays. He was like levels Ryan Greenspan as far as the type of position that he was playing. Mm -hmm. And he would just have so many big moments, man. And I, it was mm -hmm. one of those guys where I was like, okay, who is this guy? I got to learn your name. I got to figure out who this is because he was getting really, really good. And then he blows his knee out severely and is out for the entire year. And But he was one of those guys when Todd Adamson called me and we had a long conversation about his team and we were talking through players and I was like, have these conversations with guys certain times. One of the guys that said, hey, do not sleep on Corwin Weber. He did not play last year. He blew his knee out. I don't know what his knee's like right now, but that could be, if he comes back and he's healthy, 
don't let that one escape you because if he's really good, like he, it's like uh you know those certain guys that will come up and and have these big moments and then become new star players mm-hmm. and I think he has that in the bag potentially I don't want to put too much pressure on him but <laughs> Weber could be he could be the real deal dude so I'm pretty excited to see I mean how the whole roster does but because we didn't see him last year mm-hmm. one how healthy is that knee two how much is he gonna with the destruction of the like, anytime a dream dies you know level goes away and right. things change it's like okay well anyway so I heard his knee still pretty tender. Mm-hmm. I've heard from what I, from I've what heard I, it's not quite at home. Which I mean, it, then that's one of the things I don't know if, if he's if he's watching this or someone's watching this, but like just don't rush it, right? Because it's not worth it, and it'll be there when you're when you're fully healed. I think that I think that's something that's really really important. You know, I think I think people Thank tend you. to rush that sort of stuff a little bit, um, in because they want to get back into it, they want to be back in there, they feel like they need to be on the team or on the field. Just uh, you know, just don't rush that sort of stuff. It's kind, of, kind of scary. Yeah, for sure. Same same thing? A little no, different. We so got a different topic. I have a yuzu kosho chili pepper paste on it. So yuzu, Japanese citrus, a uh, little chili. They make it into a chili paste. Absolutely incredible. Uh, think bright, spicy, uh, really nice texture. Uh, that that micro uh, that micro green, some kimchi ponzu, some togarashi. Yeah. Hell yeah. I need a, I need a camera. You know those little POV oh, yeah. cameras that they have when they fa- film on people's faces. Oh yeah. I need one of those just on Maddie's face. <laughs> He's like, oh. oh. <laughs> I love sushi. Well, first of all, I just love food in general, oh, yeah. but I like really love oh, sushi. Yeah. And then you look down at his plate and was like, oh man, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get it. <laughs> you're you're about to get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um. So yeah, this is uh. What, what, do you do you guys feel like there's? I mean, I feel like everything's kind of an upset at this point, especially in 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 bracket A. But it'll be interesting, and we'll, we'll we'll revisit the brackets. I think after the layout, I've been really pushing to get the layout. I'm just I, I keep checking my phone, thinking that the miraculously the layout's going to drop on my phone. Um, I think we're close to being being able to move layout drops to Tuesdays around 4 p.m. Maybe 4:30. <laughs> We're close. We're gonna close. I'm really petitioning the NXL. I might. Uh, you can help us out. <clears throat> yeah, Maddie, if yeah, you can ask yeah. too. I've, I've talked to some of the top brass over there, and I think I think it makes sense, you know, because uh, hear me out. Granted, granted, we don't want to let get people to have too much extra time on the field. But if you release it at like 4:35 p.m., you know, it's pretty much dark around the U.S. for the most part. So it's not like people are gonna set it up and play with it on that day. Now, when they release it on Wednesday, I think Wait, it comes what, out. What time? Like four thirty five p.m. Well, live dark, Tuesday. It's dark now, but I, we're gonna more and more daylight. I understand how. I understand how it just stops. Can you just listen okay. to my, my side bad. of things? Yeah, go for it, Doc. Yeah. And uh, I know that it gets darker later in the in the in the year, just geographically where you are, and as the sun moves and the, and the earth moves and stuff. Like that. I know you know that, but you said it, and I was like, right. Yeah, so look, I'm pitching it right now, Maddie. Okay. Right. It to the we're, pitch, just we're just spitballing. I'm just spitballing. It, spitballing it, just hoping that not okay, everybody understands you. the tilt, and maybe it's you know. I'm with you. Hot earthers. Anyway. And then, uh, and so anyway, I want to get the show, the, the release to come out on Tuesdays. I was really trying to see if maybe, uh, Jason's not really the guy who wants to be in front of the camera, mm-hmm. but it'd be cool to get Jason's perspective and, and insight into what went on to, to build the layout, and also what goes in into building the layouts, because I do recall in 2020 when there was the pandemic and everybody was shut down, I was like, hey, release some layouts. He's like, there's only so much magic in the wand. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not trying to release a banger of a layout. And then be like, could he use that at World Cup? Yeah. Right. Well, I, I think he's done a great job with the layouts. Oh, crushing it. Uh, I also would like to see the layout. Because, you know, when we have these conversations and you look at certain mm-hmm. layouts, I mean, yeah, a good paintball player is a good paintball player, but some guys are a little bit better at certain things. This mm-hmm. is just natural. It's just like every sport. Our sport is just happens to be mm. extra interesting because we do play a three-dimensional field. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I, is it... And then, but even when we get the layout, is it going to be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more potentially defensive? I think with these you now pins, and it's going to be a little. We don't really know. Mm-hmm. It adds more drama to the first event to see how things are going to go down. But um, yeah, I mean, it would be really convenient if they did release the layouts on Tuesday at four p.m. Yeah, I'd say if for you guys, if the layout, me too, because I live just yeah. twenty minutes away. If the layout is anything like um, it was that one practice. And then we also had the combine. It was slightly different. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the combine one was as complex as the one that we played uh, when that you had the big practice. Oh right, right, right. But I think that field would have 
uh, some like wild games. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It it was it was really chaotic. A a lot of the games. I mean, yes and no, right? Like a lot of a lot of the field layouts that we have played have had big center structures. I don't know. It's 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 interesting. Matty, have you seen many of the uh, uh, new layout kind of concepts that have been, been uh, going around? Yeah, a decent amount. And I just, I mean, it's, I don't know. You can get so lost in the weeds on what could be right. until it actually until gets it drilled on of what it actually is. <clears throat> um, that's when I kind of have to put the microscope to it a little bit more. But yeah, I, I don't know. What do you what do you think about the possibilities? I mean, what do you think we're gonna see here? It's a first event. I'm reaching capacity too, by the way. I'm close. <laughs> I'm close. <laughs> yeah, take those rice, dude. <laughs> I mean, I love eating, but I'm not a Yosh. I can't he has his hand right so much. Right I'm like, I only got about this much yeah. more space. It's skin. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to get Damien to over here too. I can eat everything. What um? What do we got? What do we got? That is a modern twist on just a classic spicy tuna roll. So. Uh, hot house cucumber, uh, ground big eye tuna, truffle, spicy mayo, eel, kelp, and it's more of that ponzu. I'm going. Oh, I can oh, smell I the kelp ponzu. I can smell the kelp. I think we got we're like a good yeah s- on the same sushi table. Definitely, dude. I'm picking yeah. up what you're putting down for sure, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I normally when I go get sushi, I, I'd be like, hey, can I get some of that ponzu over here? Too? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, just have a little bit on the side. Absolutely. Mm. I, I rarely even use um, soy. You know, it's. Uh, if I did use soy, mm. I use like a dashi. I go soy. back and forth. You know? Yeah. Like, because I just, the ponzu has its own flavor profile. It's definitely soy. A lot brighter for yes, sure. A little bit more brighter. It depends on the type of fish, but yeah, I mean, for sure. I was thinking you were like, you know, uh, talking about paintball and dropping the layout and stuff. I was like, dude, you know, five o'clock, everything's going to be dark. You know, who's going to go out to a field? Those dudes that paintball fit. Yeah. yeah that's what everyone's saying. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what everyone's saying. I already saying. knew that, I already knew that when, I, when I was saying it, but I was just hoping that, like, mm. I'm just trying to get the layout out on the show for y'all. Uh, <laughs> give us some give us some more excitement. We can we can make it a thing of it, right? Every layout, right? We get Maddie to come over. Chef Michael comes over. We have a sushi layout party. Wait, we also Tuesdays. just talked about too just doing the show on Wednesday like some of these weeks. Yeah, we could also move we the show to Wednesday. Like yeah, I kind of remember that. We had we had we had a little thing, and you know, we can definitely move the yeah, move the, 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 the that's what Tom the, said uh, as well. But I'm leaving tomorrow for practice. I like the textures you're bringing to it. I'm flying up tomorrow night. Oh, you are. Yeah, yeah, because I want to be on first thing Thursday morning. I like that early morning thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah, it's just a it's just a like a, just a pure negri, that's fine. But when you start going to play some jazz with it, oh, absolutely, crushing it. Speaking of playing jazz, let's let's talk a little about the the artists and the architects. And and I've had a couple of people, Chef Michael, ask, um, do I do you travel? Um, yeah, somebody wanted to play. Where do we? Where do we? England. Where do they contact you? Yeah, so uh, you can contact me through Sushimi Rowan SD dot com. It's my website or Instagram. Uh, absolutely. Fly to New England. Uh, we go. We go anywhere. So uh, mm-hmm. I'll fly all the fish out there as well. So you don't have to worry about a single thing. Um, yeah, from eight people to eighty people doesn't matter. We can handle it all. Okay. Yeah. And you. And so you. How does that work? You, when you travel with the fish, like you just put it in the. So I, I'll Yeti check the Yeti. Yeah. So I got a, I got a little deal with Yeti a while back, and then uh, sent me a bunch of coolers, and you know it's it's they're my travel coolers, so uh, they're on. The jobs with me. Uh, I'll I'll just check one of them and you know load it down with that premium fish and all my ingredients, all the San Diego ingredients, you know. And uh, the- get my microgreens from here. Um, Got to get my microgreens from a local guy too now. So. And what exactly are microgreens? So it's just a premature uh, version of <clears throat> say like your cilantro, right? Right. It's that very premature my uh, cilantro right before it fully blossoms. Mm. Uh, it's you know it's it's just a small little little deal, but it's got a better texture. Mm-hmm. You know the microgreens have better textures, uh, same flavor for the most part, but definitely dresses up your you know your your sushi or you know your proteins whatever you're using it on. So it's just a just a better product to use. Yeah, you know for from a chef standpoint. Now, if you're just making like, some guacamole at the house, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> you don't need to go. You don't, you don't need, need to go to the special microgreens. microgreens. Yeah. 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 If you're trying to impress someone or, you know, food is your thing, you're trying to take some Instagram-worthy photos of your food, microgreens are a great way to dress something up, you know? <clears throat> um, 
you have a you have a, a post on you said earlier and just so I, I forgot who made that comment it was like wow pregnant wife eating sushi and then flying out to Vegas with the boys next week you must be <laughs> <laughs> sheesh <laughs> so uh, Michael did make her a nice fresh California roll Ooh, earlier okay. yeah um, and said basically Safe. you can you can put anything I mean sushi you can put anything in a roll anything I put you know, 16 hour smoked brisket in a sushi roll. Mm, love yeah. That. yeah. So, so watch some spam. Oh, dude, you kidding me? Actual <laughs> yeah. spam. Yeah. Yeah. I should have. this guy. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. We're, we're, yeah. He's got to tell you about this spam and subies I, I gave him a while back. Well, you made yeah, no, we had some of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you were yeah, there. That's yeah, right. That's right. right. That was yeah, cool. he, came in, he came in for that one. I think Kyle was sick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I love, I'm a big, I'm a big spam guy too. Love spam. Yeah, so they announced a new flavor uh, a few months ago. It's the, the maple spam. We've so got some. I've got some. I gave you, you gave some. me a maple spam. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, you got to see his eyes. <laughs> you got to get a camera on that. He's like, why well, uh, I got the I maple. Know, I love some food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, smoked brisket sushi, and then you're doing something with a, a cheeseburger sushi? Yeah, Roll. so we're doing a little collab with a uh, local restaurant here um, called The Friendly. They, uh, they do burgers. I like uh, that they, place. Yeah, so we're gonna do a, a little spin and do a sushi roll with their OG dirty flat top burger. So oh, nice. think like burger on the inside. I think they do onion as well, and then we'll do some like American cheese on top. Uh, their garlic aioli, that whole thing. Maybe some sesame seed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I like yeah, you get excited it. about yeah, it. I, I, I really, really like that place. They have good burgers. Yeah, they do. They do. Keep it simple too. They they yeah. got some wild stuff. That's what I like. Yeah, you know. Um, They're good dudes. They're really good dudes. We just did a uh, within the pits podcast. Ryan Moffat, um, uh, Ryan Gray. Oh yeah, he's talking about that. Yeah, we just did this. Yeah, really cool show about like kind of the social media presence and like like the the online. It was more or less exactly how to start and run a. um, Someone doing this? Is there someone in the house? I think it's uh, Sloan redoing her room. Her new room. I don't think she's here, but it sounds like it. But kind of like a bit of a. Oh, I think that was in there. This is in the house, huh? I think so, yeah. No one's home. It's just us. Are you sure? I'm positive. Maybe not. I don't think so, dude. I saw oh, maybe little, no, no. There was no, a little no. person that walked over here. <laughs> really? Yeah, head check on it, but... Oh, okay. There was a little person that made a perfect yeah, okay. yeah, I, thought but... were, I thought they were gone. Okay, maybe they are Okay, anyway, sorry. So it was a cool time, but it was, it was basically, if you want to learn how to start and operate uh, this type of setup, uh, minus sands the fish uh, and sushi off the break. You get one of those later, um, but that was like our, our thing. And I want to ask you because you started to like. There's been like this big, I guess, pivot into, especially on Instagram. I'm seeing like all like the like the quick clip like cooking and stuff, which you do, which is cool. I love it. I, yeah. I tell you that all the time. What um what has been like something helpful that's kind of helped build your brand and like. Kind of what's the what's your game plan as far as getting your name out there? You know, um, just exposure, just you know, getting uh, doing those videos and, and mm-hmm. trying to utilize different ingredients. You know, maybe like take something that you know we use every day and incorporate that in a sushi. Or you know, I do a lot of, of videos where you know we go catch like some rockfish out on our coast, and I'll do like I'll make some fish tacos with it, or I'll do. I think I did a. Um, I think you're a big fan of this one, the uh, the Nashville hot caught sandwich. Dude, do you see do you see this oh, yeah. comment right here? What's up? This guy goes, "I'll never be skinny, man." Keep talking about brisket and burger, yeah, making Nashville hot chicken sushi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, you literally just yeah I, yeah, I saw that one. I'm like, let's go. Yeah, so you know, just putting little modern spins or just different spins on on you know everyday food. I think that kind of captures people. Um, and just, you know, staying true to the product, using great ingredients, uh, local fish, um, you know, just keep pumping out that content and, you know, working with different people. And Well, I also think, to, at least, uh, you know, I, I eat you know, quite a bit of sushi and I've always loved sushi. Old man used to eat sushi back in the day, grew up eating sushi. But you're, these rolls aren't, they're not like the, you know, you go into every sushi joint here in San Diego, They got, even if they have a big list. Yeah. But these were 
a little elevated and yeah. that was appreciated. Yeah, I thought of it was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, whenever I do these sushi boxes too, have you seen those? So I take a mm-hmm. pizza box. I think that was the one that, yeah, yeah so the last time, the box. one of the times right. I was I take down, the pizza yeah. box and I load it down with sushi. It's all omakase style. So people order, you know, from me and um, they'll order through Instagram. I'll do like six, ten boxes a day, you know, and people buy them up and they don't even know what they're getting. Mm. So I feel like having that little how was that did you eat it i just had a bite <laughs> kyle was kyle was trying to get me to eat it. <laughs> having that in the back of their head like we don't even know what we're getting but we're excited about it like just yeah. staying excited about food i feel like is mm-hmm. driving me you know i stay excited about food i love food <laughs> yeah you know well I, I didn't i knew we were getting sushi but i didn't know what but when you like something it's like if i'm going to get burgers or whatever it doesn't matter what it is like any genre yeah. If I show up and it's a Mexican meal, like I don't really give a shit what type of Mexican I get. I eat everything, so I'm cool. Like just bring me something awesome, man. Like absolutely, wow, you know? absolutely. So, that's kind of cool too. Yeah, you know, just just staying true and just being passionate about what you deliver. You know, like I'm just I like to be passionate about everything, every role. Um, you know, I just like I said, I like real bold flavors too, but also like simplicity. And there, you can incorporate both if you if you work. You know, work, work with certain, you know, products and proteins and, you know, that upscale stuff. You can definitely a- achieve some really cool textures and simple, simple little elegant bites with just minimal ingredients. Well, you probably crush it. I'll crush it. it. <laughs> I don't know which one I like the best. This last one was amazing. This one's good. The, okay. the nigiri. The nigiri was good. I mean, honestly, the, I'm not just hyping it up because we're on a fucking show. This is legitimately really good. <laughs> like, this, I, I don't think sushi. anybody's good, like is I, like is like discounting that. No, I'm, like, I'm just I saying, man. Like, you try this just pieces. Yeah, it was really really uh, good. Um, yeah, we got this a lot is, more. This is my type of sushi too. <laughs> just to digest a little bit. No, I know. I just where did you learn how to do all this? Capacity. You know, it's so funny. Sushi's intimidating. It is. I'm self-taught. Wow. So I, I've, I've been doing sushi for about nine years. So at first, you know, what got me into it was fishing and catching all this yellowtail and all this tuna. I just really wanted to show some respect to the fish. Mm-hmm. And um, I just started one day, you know, making rice and started getting after it and watching these master chefs online and stuff. And um, I just was so intrigued by it. So I finally, you know, started making rice and making terrible looking sushi, you know. But <laughs> I've done that. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, after a long period of time of doing it and, and really talking with people and networking, you know, um, I started getting really good at it. And then I started posting my pictures online and stuff on Instagram, and people started, you know, asking me, "Hey, can we hire you for a private party?" You're like, my, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the, it's so funny when I my first party I ever did was a 60 person yacht event out in Mission Bay. Yeah. <laughs> and I used a small little five cup rice cooker, and knocked it all out. And then wow. someone bartended that night. Nice. Mm. You know, it's just, it. I didn't have the luxury of, of learning like straight up from a master chef, and, uh, um, but it's so cool because now. Last year, I got invited by a master chef, the guy who actually watched, teach me so much. He they invited me out to do a job with him. Yeah, that's and awesome. It, it was just so honoring, you know. It's just what an honor to have something like that happen that's, to you. That's right? epic. So that's great. yeah, it was it was really cool, man. But that's kind of like again, you know, the kind of wrap and it's paintball shit too. It's kind of similar thing. Yeah, you, know, you go out, you start playing. Yeah, you know, you're not necessarily going to be getting taught by a cosmic Ryan Greenspan. You know, you're just out there doing the thing. You get good at it, and then all of a sudden, people start to notice and like, oh. Hey, you want to come play for our team? Right. Hey, you know, they're, oh, you can go learn more here from these people and these people, and you have to move, can, whatever, whatever it may be. Yeah. You know, it's, yep. it's just mastering your craft because yeah, you're passionate about it. What is your craft? What is it? What, what skills do I require to achieve a level of competency where people are going to consume the thing that I create? Absolutely. You know? 100%. I couldn't agree with that more. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, man. It's, you know, it's, it's funny. I'm, uh, you know, I love paintball. I absolutely love it. And, you know, we played for uh, played for Mortal Enemy, just a local San Diego team. We our practice field that giant, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm a big. I'm six four, three hundred pounds, but I will run you down. Quick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. I mean, I'm not gonna be hopping in the snake every point. But, Let's see how big this dude uh, is. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Yeah, you're like what six two, six three? Um, no, I'm like the same height. Okay, but, yeah, but, <laughs> but, but I, I'm about two two or five. Okay, I'm you're, this is a big yeah. dude, bro. Yeah. This is a big dude. Yeah. But you know who I, I like dude. watching is. Um, that guy Colt, Luke Cow. Yeah, yeah. Colt, I was saying, he's yeah. A, he, you know, he's a big guy. He's, <laughs> he's an animal out there. Yeah, you know? man. 
and I just love watching, you know, watching him, and it's just, you know, it's cool because he's a big guy. He looks pretty tall. I would assume he's Colt's about. I think he's about six foot, uh, about your size, a little bit, a little bit smaller. But he's. Uh, but the thing is, what I love about paintball, and you know, will beat me up about this. Like, oh man, he says the gun's a great equalizer. I'm like, yeah, because that's fucking true. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can be any size. You can be tiny. You can be huge. Like, it doesn't really matter. Yes, it helps to be smaller if you're running the snake. But as long as, like, Colt starts on that team and he helped that team win five events last year because the dude is a hell of a gunfighter. He's got good time. Absolutely. He shoots, he murders people on the break, dude. So you, that's the cool thing, one of the cool things about this game. I mean, yeah, football, you can be different sizes and play different positions. It's kind of similar to paintball, yeah. but it's, it's different because we all got a gun, bro. Yeah, you know? it's right. So it's I love right. it. And this is one of the... You might be really fast. You're not special. 300 feet per second fast. Well, I was... Because, I, I mean, you know, obviously I'm not small either, but right. I started playing the front, but I always used to joke, like, when I would match up against the Spickos of the world, and I, when they were, like, uh -huh. rookie dudes that tried to get in their heads, I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking, man, this dude is blazing fast and really hard to shoot. I need to fuck with this guy somehow. Yeah. Like, so you used to be like, hey, dude, I got 1,600 friends, and they all can run yeah. faster than you can, bro. So good luck trying to make it to that spot because I'm going to blow your head off. Whatever edge you need to get. Absolutely. You know? so. Absolutely. It's funny because this uh, practice this weekend, too, Colt and I are playing. I had to kind of take over like uh, the role of Rab as being mm -hmm. a 3-2 hybrid guy. Yeah. Um, and Colt and I were playing both the same position, like the back center guy going out. And we ended up in a one-on-one -on -one after like a really long point. Everyone came down to it, and then... After the point, we're like talking about it, and I'm like, two two opposite spectrum yeah, totally. size players yeah. in the same position, huh? Like, yeah. <laughs> for sure. For we've sure. got uh, we've got this graphic that we made. Here he is. Here is here. This he's got goals though. He's, oh, got, yeah. the, he's yeah. got big goals. Big boy. He's got big goals because yep. we did we did the other images right. We did the other images. Um, I don't know if this is uh, <clears throat> right here. What? So that's gonna be because he said he's gonna he wants to drop. Uh, Quite a bit of weight, yeah. Right, and this is this is originally this was him. This is what he looks like winning right now. You know what I mean? Cigar in the hand, trophies everywhere. But but this is where he's headed. This is where he's headed right yeah. now. All right, he's going. He's getting. He's working on the abs. Hey man, that's him. Yeah, nothing's gonna motivate he's got you like, hey, dude. Uh, the pro <clears throat> league is. I mean, we did this little. You know, uh, it was a promo for Vegas, but I had to take. You know, the, the essentially the task was we talk about paintball, but for a little bit more of a general audience, but like still make it good. But at the end of it, I'm like, man, this is paintball. No quarter given and none asked for. So if anything's going to gonna motivate you to get in the it's best shape possible, yeah. it's going to be you're about to go against the best 200 paintball players on planet Earth. Well, yeah, yeah man, you know, like <laughs> no quarter given, none asked for. You better get ready. Yeah, that's the OG right there. You don't worry about it. They can, they're taking a beating. Yeah, we're gonna Alex, bring, we're Alex, gonna, like, yeah, let's see what you got too. I saw Alex tripping to me. Do we call him or not? So we don't. There's no. We don't. Have the, the camera capacity. The whole. The whole deal. Dude, right? I brought something from the mid '90s. I brought something from excessive. I brought. This these is these from lenses 01. have not. Um, yeah, no. This is like straight out of the archive, dude. Out of the archive. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. it. You so said they, bring like bring like iconic yeah. GT stuff. But yeah, absolutely. Excessive. Iron Man hasn't. I mean, it literally. This is. What I wore in 01, there's a picture of me and Oliver sitting on a hill in, in, uh, in SC Village, and this was the pair of I remember these. I'm wearing. And these. With no this, ears? This yeah. No, no ears, bro. We didn't even wear face masks back in the day. Yeah. Um, there it is. Yeah, that was from I mean, This lens is still That's usable, though. A couple cracks on the inside. Couple spiders. Dude, those things go for a lot of money on the websites now. On the like Facebook pages, those clears. Marketplace stuff? Yeah. Dude, oh, Marcelo, yeah. dude Marcelo unveiled, he's got the clear bottoms. Like, it looks like they just came out of the package. Well, yeah, really? really sick. These have been, yeah, these are the clear frames, but these have been flipped up because we used to just play like this. Yeah. But, like, you would not get, you wouldn't be caught dead with your mask. I remember. This, this didn't is, that, I always play like this. Yeah, and you then would, then you would play like that, too. And they're like, all right, Ryan, you got to go to the X. I'm like, all right, Black Shield down. Yeah. <laughs> Was yeah. it Philly last year? Yeah. Like, uh, what event Oliver just got away with no chin strap in his mask? So he, pulled up. <laughs> he had a chin strap, I think. <laughs> Yeah, the mask was rolled up. I was like, how's he? Yeah, play? I think you can roll the mask up now. Yeah, and then... Uh, I don't think you can roll the mask up. No? That's a little HB, uh, HBO 7. Ooh, this is cool. Uh, yeah, straps. The, and got, these these got, are from the... This was from, he's this got got from a, 1994. Uh, he's got a... These original straps. Uh, 1995. A bread loaf uh, bag 
little metal tie to hold his earpieces on. Well, bro, I'm, I'm not like bringing these out here to like, oh, look at my Show pristine yeah. goggles, okay. dog. Like these are. Yeah. I know it's just, got, like, it's just cool. on them. These are legendary things, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not... Let's talk about this. Whoa, oh, yeah. look at that, dirty. dude. Who's got the VHS player? Well, no. So I, I got a, a, a mold, I got two calls okay. in the past year from my old man. He's like, hey, you got some shit in our garage. You need to get it out. And I was like, all right. So, um, so I'm like, well, what is it? He's like, it's paintball stuff. You need to come grab it. And I was like, okay, well, what type of paintball stuff are we talking about here? And he's like, I don't know, some jerseys, some of your old stuff, whatever. So I get, so I go and I, he pulls these out. Uh, so it was like, so it was like my rookie jerseys. That one, that's sick. So it was like my, my rookie jerseys, dude, from, from, uh, Sheesh. This is the cool, or like, feel, feel that, like, that this heat transfer. It's not nearly as thick. It's all oh, one wow. piece heat transfer. Like, this was the, this so, is yeah, the, this one. Like, oh, one. So this was, like, the very first jerseys I, that we ever got on the Ironman, um, with the misspell on the name. Cause Matt I T. Know Matty. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it's yeah. Rich. And then this was from 2000, the year we won the first team to win the World Cup and the series at the same time. Um, oh, really? And, and this were ones we, with like camo ones. Yeah, that one's sweet. Yeah, so uh, so this was from yeah. 2000. And then Hold this that was, one up. Let me see that one. There you go. You go back of this thing's round, too. I really like these these JT camo. But these are, this is, what, these are 99? Uh, 98. These are really nice skins. 98 World Cup? Because they came, I thought they came out with these in World Cup of 98. They I came out with this possibly, green one. Possibly. Because we won World Cup of 98, and then for first place, we got, we got. So I, I had the, we, they, the I cotton, thought. the cotton uh, to the polyester transfer happened that year. But the yeah. first, the ball, but I always know my you first, guys the might first ones that I got because it was the, they had misspelled my name. Because they didn't misspell. Yeah, this feels good. But then they came out in 2002. But anyway, I wasn't, this? I wasn't really going to argue. <laughs> Mate. Yeah, Mate. It's like Mate. a French. <laughs> um, but this one, yeah, this is the one from Push. For Dude, I might have actually, even but I think this was the one I was. This thing but I think this is the one I was wearing in Push. Like that's the actual jersey I was wearing in Push. Damn. Dude, it's these sick. are really nice gifts from you, Matty. Yeah, there you go. That's eBay, you know. eBay, yeah, four right. thousand bucks. And this was the, this is the one, this is the jersey yep. I was wearing when we won World Cup. So like in Sunday Drivers. So this is the one from Sunday Drivers. Okay. And the claws. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, my tea. <laughs> yeah. And then uh and then I, uh -huh. I only have two of these left, but these are the my only but so yeah, but uh, these were just Matty Ho, were, these, not Matt Ho. These have all been sitting in uh storage just at my parents' house for like years and years Dang. and years and years. Nitro, nitro, nitro duck. Damn, dude. So this is great. Well, you, said, the past. you said bring I some, love it. Yeah, you said bring, bring some JT stuff. That's right. Yeah, but then so the other so I had more shit in a different storage, and then I just found this like Rich Duffer jersey from two thousand, which is pretty tight. So ah, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, so I'm pretty stoked on on the haul. Dude, this is. Epic. I feel like teams look should bring that retro look back like every once in a while. Like that was I liked that too because the red was like so rich. Dude, I love this like, jer these jerseys or this one right here. This might be one of my favorite jerseys I've ever worn, bro. Like we obviously we did good that year, but I just really like the the color on it, the way it popped, and just kind of how everything was. Yeah. I just really like this this specific. I mean, you, dude, this jersey is twenty four years old. Yeah. And it just still feels like it's yeah. It feels it's just you could play it. Yeah, I really like too. Like even NBA teams will do the retro jerseys every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, for uh, like a few games. Well, the X, Factor, X Factor did it quite a bit, right? They threw in the bubble jersey. They threw in the claw jersey. X Factors run the retro. Yeah, it's just no one can like get it done. Now, I happen to know very well the guy who designed all of those jerseys, and he has all the original artwork. Oh wow! Don Widmer oh, lives. Don, yeah, in, Don, Don Widmer lives in, in Carlsbad, and he's like, he I still have, has that original. He's like, I have all of the original artwork and files. Well, because I reprinted the excessive jerseys mm -hmm. last year, and um, but the because then John was like, hey, would you want to reprint another one? And I was like, well, which one would you want to reprint? I think that this is the one I would want to reprint if I could. Is there any? Um, cool. They have the old machines though, so you can make the. 
Well, no, but you would just you get the art. You can get the artwork, yeah. or they can and put it on a template. Yeah, this this template. template's not complex. But the only the issue for that though is that the Iron Man are a die intellectual property, and this is a JT jersey. So I would need to make some phone calls to try mm. to actually get that jersey. Well, you would make the jersey, and then you'd have to find someone with a heat press, which you could heat press a logo on your own jersey. Yeah, with an iron. Like if I if I go get a yeah with an iron or a heat press. Yeah, yeah I don't have a heat press, so yes, with an iron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was get that it was cool to get yeah, that yeah, call because like honestly I go. thought those jerseys were gone bro like I you know it was um, mm-hmm. no I had no clue that they still existed and then you get the call from the old man he's like hey come get this shit out of my, my house you know <laughs> yeah okay, I'm about to throw this box that says uh, do not touch it says your name on it yeah my mom I was, was always like, like I was nudie no, magazine, it, just, but it says not. paintball jerseys it says Matt's paintball jerseys on the side of it oh, and, but it's just been sitting in the corner of a garage in my parents house dude that's epic my mom always years. says that. Like, do you want me to send you some of your old paintball stuff I was like no keep it in the vault I want to look at it later on so I'll just save it. Oh, my, nice. my mom brought uh, an original, like, like pristine condition NXE gear bag. She's oh, like, here, I got this for it. I, I, I don't know if it had anything in it. Um, and someone, someone who lives here <laughs> threw it in the alley. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> or just got rid of it. Someone, someone here. Oh, so P- PB, my, oh, PB strikes yeah. again. One, so when we got, uh, so we're in Pacific Beach right now, and I still live down here for probably too long, but, uh, but uh, we won a tournament in Chicago, and me and Davey switched jerseys that event, because he was not having good luck, and I was, so he's like, hey, switch jerseys with me, I was like, yeah, of course, bro, let's go. So I won, we, we switched jerseys, and then I also had a Brandon Lamerson jersey, so I took them and I washed them in our outside, uh, yeah. and some dude, some Almost person came by and just jacked all my clothes out of the dryer and stole the two jerseys and I just drove around for like the next few days. Just looking, just trying to see if I could find somebody that had the jerseys and they were gone. I was like, God damn it! Uh, <clears throat> That's uh, yeah. This was actually an in- inside job. Yeah. Oh really? Wasn't, yeah, the garage wasn't open. It was an inside job. There's someone mm-hmm. in. Yeah. There's someone throws, in throws, throws, like that, that can out. reach the garage door opener. Oh, yeah. so Sloan. No. Sloan basically it's took your jersey. Uh, oh, is it's an adult. Oh, it's an adult. There's somebody okay. who knows the, how to function a garage door opener <laughs> and can lift a gear bag and put it into the, the alley. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So I don't know who it was. A couple hundred bucks with the jerseys out here. I don't, if, know, uh, I don't know who that was. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, I want to uh, I want to talk a little bit, uh, touch, because uh, we're, we're, go- we're cruising here. I want to talk a little bit about this artist art, architects kind of concept, and, mm-hmm. and then kind of move into there and and just give everybody like a paint a small bit of a picture and, and give some ideas on players and just talk about some players out there that kind of really define that role. Um, this is something that Rusty always kind of prefaced and, and, and introduced was the artists and the architects because you need them on your team. To build or in your or, or in your circle to build the foundation and create the life, right? And I think that that's kind of also something that's that goes into you know the goggles is great. Like you know like you want to have like this cool artistic your personal profile of, of a product or you know it could be your car, it could be your gun, your goggle, whatever it is. Like it's yours and you know you create the sushi and it's like put your own flair on it. And it's it's important to be have that creativity and then on the field. You know, you have you have those types of players who are who build that foundation and follow the the, the game plan and make sure everything is the X's and the O's are in the right spot, and the guns are looking the way. And then you got the guys playing jazz. But you need some guys playing jazz. Absolutely. You absolutely have to have that. You kinda also need a little bit of both. You need, well, guys, no, absolutely. You need, you need guys that are both architects and sure that artists. fit right there in the middle. Yeah, that kind of can bridge the gap. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because some people look at the game and they look at it as, you know, humans can be leaning more towards the archetype of the artist and more towards the archetype of the architect. But you do have to have some people that can bridge the gap to explain it. Because some people are very analytical. They want the X's and O's. They want to, what's my job? I go right, right. here. And then other people, they don't want anything to do with that. Like the, so, like the, stand, like the, tip, uh, the archetypal the typical Russian player. Go here, yes. shoot for 30 seconds, yes. move. 10 seconds move. Here's your zone. Uh-huh. You, if, if you if we lose through the zone, it's your fault. Um, but but the thing that's so fascinating about paintball is that because you, your bodies are getting whittled down, is that there's the premise of the game plan. We're trying to attack this side or make this move. But then things can change drastically and very quickly. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have a little bit of an artist's soul, those guys, in my experience, the people that are too analytical and too sure. honed in on the architect side of things or listening to the architect and not 
believing in their heart of the artist's paintbrush, you know, kind of painting in the chaos, so to speak, then, and, and I really truly believe that what we're kind of describing here is that, you know, the, the secret of the wind, you know, because being able to, you know, to transition in a brief moment to, okay, we've got it all, oh shit, oh, we lost two that way, okay, I gotta, now I gotta, now I gotta play jazz with this. The people that thrive in those chaotic moments, but still understand the principles of the game, that's the best thing, you know. So painting in chaos. I yeah, like that. but but then, but it's both ways too because mm -hmm. it goes to everything. It's like even the stuff we wear. I mean, somebody created this. Like somebody designed this, and then you put it on your face to protect you. The team name, the team logo, the uh, the logistics. I mean, the, there's so many different ways you could kind of discuss the, you know, the the artist versus the architect, and and then even to the way like as we just were with the way that the game is broken down itself, actually playing it, you mm -hmm. know, and and then also not just playing it, but what works. You know, what's elite? So, I mean, we could probably yeah. spend another two and a half no, hours. No, I know. About I know. That I said, we're going to touch on it. We're going to take a little taste. Yeah, I don't know. What do, you, what do you think? I mean, you've obviously no. been very successful at this, Ryan. So, yeah. You know, and you've kind of, I feel like you, in your career, you you go a little bit back and forth. You've been an artist out there, but you can be an architect too. I mean, you're kind of, I think one of the reasons this made you one of the greatest is that you have been able to, based on the situation, the time, and the place, on the field, off the field, whatever, you can be an architect and be like, all right, what's our business model? How are we doing this? You know, blah, 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 to what's our game plan? All right, well, I'm going to argue my this or that. But then playing, you can be very much an artist out there sure. because you're really good when the shit hits the fan. So, I mean, give me your thoughts. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I definitely think, you know, it was funny because when, when Rusty had presented it and kind of like brought my attention to that, that whole concept, it was like, you know, we need them both and you're the architect and Oliver's the artist. Just like straight up, like, you don't count on him to really follow the game plan, but you can count on him to win games for you. Um, and there's a lot of trial and error that go into all that, which I, I think is a really important factor and in, 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 uh, into everybody's game. I always say, like, same thing, like, test the fence. You know, think of, like, the, the, the raptor in Jurassic Park, the original one. He's like, oh, no, they're testing the weak spots in the fence. You know, you want to always constantly be getting shocked until you find your rhythm, your tempo, and the ability and the confidence to move forward with with all that. So yeah, through failure, I've been able to, to, to figure out the best method for success. But on the architect, if it's architect side, like I can see the game plan unfolding. I think Kyle fits into that, uh, architect, uh, side of things, even though, and which is not common for someone who plays up front can see the whole game, knows how to win the game and knows what needs to happen. Um, and then, uh, and then can move like and, and dictate the game from there. Well, I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more, but I, I think it's also <laughs> interesting and then Kai with you is that I feel that any longevity in a paintball career, especially if you're part of the, I wouldn't say power structure, you could say it that way, but you know, more of the infrastructure of how a team runs, how it gets from point A to point B, what you're doing when you're there, all these different things. Everyone kind of starts out as a little bit of an, of an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, your ability to be creative on the attack, your ability to you know, excel in pressure situations. These are the, the things we're looking for in up and coming players. Um, but in order to continue to progress in your career, especially as you get a little bit older, you have to be able to bring in those elements of the architect because everyone, we need that. You know, you have to have that structure. You know, it's like, you know, if you don't have, like in order for you to paint a picture, somebody had to, you know, cut the tree down to create the wood for the frame, make that canvas and bleach it, stretch it out and put the nails in. You, you know, deliver it to your house, make the paints and all the different pigments and all these certain things have to happen in order for you to sit there and take that, pick up that paintbrush and paint that, that beautiful picture. You mm -hmm. know, someone has to build the knife, sharpen the knife. You can sharpen the knife too, but like create the best tools for you to also be able to. Well, and knives yeah. have certain geometry, you know, so it's like the knife, depending on what knife you're using to cut. I use different knives. Yeah, what, different, what is the, what is the knife, best, you know? what yeah. is the best knife? What is your, like, if you said, like, I can't live without, like, this is, or this is the knife I want. Oh, uh, like a, a, a traditional, like, a 14-inch Japanese uh, Yadagaba. Yeah, like this one. Let's see but it. But longer. Don't let Kyle end up to you. <laughs> well, you got to chop your trigger fingers too, off. Too sharp. <laughs> Something like this, but longer. Gives uh -huh. you those real, real nice nigiri cuts and stuff like that. If you can see that. Oh, yeah, there it is. That one looks expensive. Yeah, this is like three fifty for this one. It's not too bad. Uh, I got one knife that's like a six hundred dollar knife. You know, it's they just you know I feel like 
it's kind of like buying a paintball gun. You know, you want a, a, obviously a solid tool, but you're also putting these things through a lot. You right. Know, you're, you're you're doing a lot with these with these tools, and you know, as much as I want them to be investments, they're still just a tool. And spending twenty eight hundred dollars on a knife that, that I really want. Yeah. It's just the real boss, the wife, will not let me do it. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But. Yeah. <laughs> No, but it, but it's that, but that, that's the type of conversation we're having, right? You know, so whichever way you want to break it down, artists versus architects, both are needed in the mm-hmm. realm of, especially if we're talking about creating something that is going to be successful. If you're a paintball team, somebody has to be a little bit of an artist because if not, I mean, I don't, I can't even remember the last time any team won without some freedom, right? In a chaotic moment. That's, I think, and what the biggest so problem with AC Dallas back three years ago. Their problem was is they tried to build this, this unbreakable house of cards. And obviously, one person makes a mistake, it gets you so far. I, I tell this to all the teams that I coach too. You know, just the no mistake paintball only gets you so far. Will you hand me that iPad right there? Alex is Alex really wants to put his two cents in here. Yeah, um, he'd be great. This is this is a this is, a, this is, right is, okay. Alex's this is an dude. okay conversation. Alex. Are you kidding me, dude? Don't Alex don't crazy, dude. He's too an much. artist and an architect. I thought he was one of the workers that chopped trees down. Gentleman and a scholar. <clears throat> I gave out Alex artist. I didn't. <laughs> well, he's right, had to, but he's had to become more of an architect <laughs> over time. Here we go. What do you guys want? <laughs> <laughs> you wanted, you he's wanted us. Hoop, he's the know. biggest dude. <laughs> what? He's the biggest dude. What? Well, when he told me about the allergies, I'm like, hey, is there any allergies? He's like, no, but Alex is probably gonna tell you he's got an allergy. Maddie, <laughs> and you did. You did. Hey, Maddie. Yes, sir. I'm the architect of Ryan's entire personality. <laughs> well, yeah, I was saying my, that he's I'm... my he's my finest achievement. That well, hey, congratulations. You did. If it wasn't for me, he'd still be digging holes in the backyard with his pet parrot. He's been. Yeah, let's get a little sneak peek of the magazine. You guys want to see a sneak peek of the magazine? Dude. Yo. Yeah. Ooh, got one. It, it's huge, bro. It's, uh, hey, hold it, hold it up to so we can get scale. See a side profile of your nose, and then <laughs> and then by your ear. There it is. Look at that. That is a big <laughs> magazine. My nose doesn't even cover half of it. It's a big <laughs> magazine. Yeah. Um, all right. Give me a page number. I'll I'll, uh, I'll flip to that page. One eighty-seven. It's only one hundred and forty-four pages. Long. Okay. Sixty-nine. <laughs> Sixty-nine, dude. <laughs> that was uh that was Angel Fragoza's number, and then Chris Lasoya's number. And Brian Coles. <laughs> Texas Benefit sixty nine too. Sixty nine. You can't give me a Yeah, everybody get let me get let me get ten numbers from everybody in here in the right. chat. We'll Who's page sixty nine. It's Prince Harry, an article about him. Look at that. Prince Harry the shit. Yeah. Nice. Alright, page eighteen. Let's go. And then when does this magazine come out? Um Dude, this is a sick page. There we go. Um, so That'd be sweet if it's speaking Spanish. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it's it's like it's 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 I I I'm like really happy with how it came out. I'm I'm. It's way better than I thought it was gonna look. Nice. What number are you? Um, number eleven. So, number yeah. eleven. Page eleven. Let's go eleven. Page eleven. Eleven. No, I'm not showing you that page. <laughs> what? It's too good. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta you gotta keep some some. Something away from this. I, I did put one uh, photo of Mike Arena getting bunkered in though. <laughs> so, if you want to see that? You want to see that one? You need to subscribe. Page eighty-five. Uh, um, but I am like super stoked about how many um, pro guys have uh, have picked this up already. Um, so hopefully we'll be shipping in the next probably month and a half. Um, we have a few small changes to make to this, and then we'll put in our uh, approval. Um, I need to com- yeah. I need to completely rewrite my piece. Alex. Dude, your piece is great, bro. <laughs> it's only I'll, I'll be done with it tomorrow. <laughs> no, I know, but I thought about it. and I was like, I just need to completely rewrite it. You know, it's just not good enough. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm not trying to change it, but I love it. Uh, but I mean, <clears throat> let's talk about the. I still remember the day? It's 1999. A perfect early autumn morning in Southern California. No, you don't want to read. Twenty years old, dude. huh? I don't want to read that part. Maddie's going to give us a, a yeah, read. I like that part? Maddie, I think you said No, I like that part, but that's halfway through. 
I know. I'm just giving him an excerpt, Matty. Oh, Come an on. excerpt. Okay. Anyway, it's it's my, my, Maddie wrote this piece called Hyperball Hits Different. That's like you know, sort of a look at why Hyperball is different than and Woods Ball are different than than Airball, and really um, sort of dives into uh, his personal experience of uh, you know playing Hyperball, which uh, very visceral, and you know how Maddie does it. Very um, uses all the literary devices in all the right ways. So mm-hmm. um, really. Uh, Really, really cool to, uh, you know, read a piece uh, from from you because I haven't in a really long time. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, great, great contributors here. Got a, you know, forward by me. Uh, great piece by Josh Taylor, um, Jen Falk. Uh, photo contributions from, you know, all the best photographers. Uh, Mike Jeffrey, who's amazing, um, did two big interviews. Qu- uh, Quinn Nadu wrote a great piece. Um, Ren, I mean, your piece about uh, the the Team USA is amazing. Um, even though you dog me quite a bit, um, but that's okay. I can take it. I think that what you said was you wanted something gritty and you wanted someone to hold no punches. You said don't yeah, don't, don't hold any punches. punches right? So even though yeah. you're the editor, you're the big chief, the big cheese, as they say. Yeah, I I didn't edit it. I, I let it fly. <laughs> If you had, if you had, if you had, um, but I, I gave you praise at the end because you didn't actually turn your back on me like we all thought you were going to. No, I just, I, I went down with you complaining. Yeah. It's a great trip to France. Just like the old days. <laughs> yeah, so Alex, oh, tell everyone where they can uh, subscribe to the mag because, you so, know. Uh, GapPaintball.com, that's G-A-P paintball.com. There's also a link on the Hormesis website. Um, so head over there. It's uh, the first two issues. Wait, is it and, not Great uh, American Paintball Mag? It's it's I, there's I got a few different ones, but that's a lot to type in. So it's okay. gappaintball.com. Well, luckily or, for or everybody Great watching, Paintball Mag. Yeah, I, I've, I've luckly for everybody watching, I've already put a hyperlink in there where you guys can subscribe to the magazine, and the subscription gets you what? Uh, it gets you the first and second issue. So the first issue ships <clears> in <throat> in spring, and the second will ship in in uh, fall. So, awesome. um, basically this first issue covers, you know, all of last year and world cup. Um, and really, I mean, we're, we're trying to make it less topical. So when, um, we're not doing like tournament coverage, it's just great pictures from throughout the year, along with excerpts from the people that are in the pictures. So, you know, it's more of capturing a feeling in a moment rather than trying to like tell the story of a tournament because, you know, you already know that story because you watched it on Ghost Sports. Um, <laughs> you heard uh, it on the that, Spick and Span show. Or the Spick and Span right. show. Right. And, um, or play the game. Or play the game. Oh, Maddie, are you doing this award ceremony thing? Uh, I thought we're doing it. Okay, I, well, I'm, I'm committed to doing it. Yes, so. I'm, I'm not that committed to doing it, but I, go, but I will do it. To lessen your burden. What's another okay, couple so hours I, of I started writing a couple things which, which I will share with you. Well, um, dude, give us give us the well, opening I just, monologue. I am a, I just I'm a little worried that because it's gonna be at the end of a fucking thirty day slog. But uh, but like yeah. I told you, I mean I'm down to to help you with it. But yeah. Well, the opening monologue hasn't been written yet, but I think I'll I'll title it um, uh, the award show slash roast of Ryan Greenspan. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding, dude. I wouldn't do you like that. You have to, you have to get us, especially, get us somewhere. Especially if you didn't have a microphone to defend yourself. I think that's the best part. You're just gonna have on. to sit and smile in the. In the uh... Um, but just Are so you nominated th- for any awards. I am, I am. Yeah, the Speak and Span show is not. We didn't even get, we didn't even get honorable Ooh, mention. Really? We didn't even you get nominated. Snub, sick, sick burn, bro. I know, I know, burn. But everyone voted for us for a favorite team. Hopefully, yeah. The there's year. a way to go on to MajorLeaguePaintball.com, and then there's. When you go to vote, you can vote for your favorite team, and you can just put any team name in there. Yeah. Did Play It Again podcast get nominated? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Dude. Creators. Um, but on Major League Paintball, this is actually kind of great. If if, if not everybody has uh, has, has looked looked yeah. into it, um, you can keep your shoes on there. Oh, those are boot work boots. No, you can't. If you go to MajorLeaguePB.com, there's a there's a a way to jump in here, and you can uh, you can you can vote. Somehow, chair over there. and on the first page, welcome. Voting, you glad can, you made uh, it. Yeah. 
I think the voting is over. Uh, uh, what's up? Well, you could have. Yeah, the voting's over. Um, Damien didn't know what time the show started. Pull that up. Sure. Grab some sushi, dude. Are you hungry? Oh, wait, oh what up, Damien? <laughs> hey, what up, Alex? Dude, he smashed a cake in my face. Can you believe it? Dude, I can't believe you're on Iron Man now, bro. That's super weak. Only the first. Next. <laughs> Don't make him say anything he'll <laughs> regret. <laughs> He's easily late. Damien me also just Whoa, asked me if we're doing dinner. I was, gonna, I was typing up uh, Damien uh, right there at the door? in my text messages yeah. to see. I wanted to read a text message that he had sent me before, but um, I, te- I clicked on Damien Ryan instead, and the last thing he texted me was just a, a shot of his Get abs in. just completely ripped. <laughs> um, Try this one. You guys want to hear this uh, text They're that all. I read last time by Damien? Yeah, let's hear the text. Merry Christmas, you beautiful creature. Thank you for the, all the opportunities you gave me the last two years. I plan on coming back. I'll make sure to bunker Ryan for you. We can plan it out during a point and set it up. I'm open to suggestions. Ha ha ha. Have a great day, friend. <laughs> Bro. I don't well guys so much. That was when he that was when he was leaving the team, correct? Yeah, yeah, I know. And I, I didn't I didn't understand the context. I was like what do you mean, coming back? <laughs> Damn it. I was like, this is the nicest text message anyone's ever written me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, boom! <laughs> By the way, I quit, loser. <laughs> By the way, yeah. Kick me in the balls. Um, <coughs> dude, did you guys practice, Damien? No, we went the previous weekend to New Orleans to play the Hurricanes. Did you guys get kicked out of ASG again? Uh, no, but when I got there, uh, I went to go check in, and uh, his wife was like, I gotta verify that you're not banned. So she like radioed it in, and she's like, hey, uh, I got Damien here, is he banned? <laughs> Were you banned? No, 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 I was clear. No, 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 I, saw that banned, I was like, I saw you slam him in the face with the cake, and I was like laughing, I'm like, oh, that's hilarious. Dude, and then Yosh got so- you back, and I was like, oh, this is funny, and I was like, wait a second, third ASG, <laughs> Damien, I was like, is... I mean, I guess Damien's a lot of ASG, yeah. but I don't know what to do. I should have lodged a complaint and been like, this guy should yeah. never be yeah, allowed back. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, was, I thought, I don't know if you snuck in or how it worked out. Or they were like, nah, it's Damien. He's cool. <laughs> Team can't come. Iron Man can't come, but Damien. I mean, should be like, he could, you can come, but you have to wear an Aftermath shirt the whole time. <laughs> but Damien's going to Damien's gonna repair the relationship. Watch. You can do it, Damien. Mm-hmm. I mean, so? Well, it was yeah, only it. it was Omaro that got in the argument with them, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so I mean, why did dude, I? It'll cool. It'll cool over. Whatever, dude. It'll yeah, cool over. Cool yeah, it's fine. Most don't pass. This, this, this is just this is just paintball shit, dude. This is just shit. Paintball. Dude, Kyle. Yeah. You just ordered it. Yep. Dude, hell yeah, bro. I got you. That thing looks sweet. I'm excited for Dang, it. Dang, bro. I need you need it because he's got his new. He's I got just new I got a new apartment and I, it's just decked out with creative stuff. So. Yeah, it's going to be perfect. Go. Hey, people need yeah, to order it, the, the Great American Paintball because nothing exists without support. Okay, so. It is cool. Um, it actually, means like, help out. That you said that. You like cool shit? Like, like, step step up. Yeah, I look. Like, hashtag grow the game this and hashtag grow the game that. But this is how you help grow the game is, like, cool things exist. I didn't, haven't even got a TV in my place. It's just art, books. It's good. Dude, you can have a poster of Marcelo on your wall, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Was that, is there a fold-out poster of Marcelo in the magazine? It's not a full out poster, but there's a pretty dub spread of him. Um, that's what you need. Like, you know, the, one of my favorite, my favorite thing about National Geographic is that it always comes with that foldable fold out, like kind of poster size, mm. you know, spread. Yeah. Like, that's, look at this. That's pretty cool. Here we go. Another shot. Look at that. <clears throat> Epic. That's pretty cool. Wow. Who's that? Jacob? Centerfold, that's the one. Oh, nice. That's the, that's the one. Centerfold. centerfold. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's that's uh yeah yeah. National there's, actually, there's actually a good shot of Maddie in here too from when from his days playing. There's a, we have a section like a throwback section. It's Maddie with his Predator auto cocker. You had a Predator with his barrel, yeah. with his barrel full of broken carnivore. paint, like, shooting curveballs. Shot a lot of different. Oh, the carnivore. 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 Yeah. yeah. Carnivore. It just, I don't know what year it was because I did shoot a predator. You did? Yeah. 97. 97? Yeah. <laughs> what was your born? Were you born, dog? Girl, I was born in 96, bro. I was playing pro in 95, dog. Yeah. Get with the fucking program, Damien. Dude, <laughs> this, is from, this is from 1997. Like, grow, grow, grow up, dude. Grow up. We were all young one day. I only started playing like... Grow up. God bless you, dude. You've come a long way in 2016, dude. You've come a long way. 
<laughs> um, well, uh, let's see. Damien, do you want some more sushi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I saw you going at it, so like... No, no, I just kind of was going at it because I think I was sitting in front of it. Dude, me. I'm honestly jealous. I want some sushi. Um, you got allergies, though. <laughs> 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 Alex, what allergies do you have these days? You have new allergies? The oldest... Alex will tell the same blue joke. Dairy, Every time about jokes. Fish. Yeah. Blue dairy shellfish. <laughs> fish. Red okay. meat, pig, red meat, chicken. Do you remember my dinner? Yes. I do. I did go to the doctor and I said I had high cholesterol, so now I'm like, oh, I'm you, don't have, that out. you don't have any like real allergies though, right? You've only been telling for a month. No. Sorry. I don't care. Yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to mess around. <laughs> I'm only, the only thing I'm allergic to is fun. Ryan Greenspan? Yeah. Ryan Greenspan is fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, want to talk about Aftershock? Just kidding. <laughs> Wait, I didn't think they are going to, did you guys talk about him a lot already? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> oh, it's because they're being talked about a lot. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to talk Dude, about? Dude, I also got R- Maddie. Yeah. I got I got dailies from the Iron Kids movie too. Dude, Just let's get one. Hey, let's get one little. Let's get a tease. Let's get a taste. Can we play the? Dude, can we play the trailer? Do you guys Just give play the Yeah, we play the trailer. I'll I'll play the trailer here at the end. We get a little uh, little strike from. Let's get a tease. Don't let the hair the kids, they love to have fun. It's not a joke. <laughs> oh, and I always felt like the older, more reserved person. Like, Backpack. Dude, Eric Roberts going to get in fucking trouble. <laughs> Eric Roberts, he's like, he's like, God, these guys are always doing fun shit, and they're always going to get in trouble. And then he, and then he, <laughs> he, he like complained about it, and Davey was like, yeah, that was about the end of Eric Roberts on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what what uh, what kind of taste do we have? What like is it still a November scheduled tentative release date? Yeah, yeah, World Cup. World Cup. Yeah, so we're working, we're working, working on it. All right. There's and some good. There's some good. Um, can't rush greatness, dude. Maddie in this. I mean, I only got a little part, only about twelve minutes, but Maddie has a nice. Uh, Let's get twenty seconds. Give us twenty seconds. I can't pick out a good twenty seconds. Hey, just any twenty just seconds. Just give us what you give. Huh? <laughs> Alright, fine. All he can give is 20 seconds. I'll just give you that. (laughs) (laughs) Boom! Here, I'll give this a slow burn. That was a slow burn. That was a slow burn. I'll give you this LaSoya story. That's all I'll give you. Okay. I don't even want to do that. Come on, dude. Hey, slow burn is something we've never experienced before. You gotta watch the movie. Isn't Dan just releasing all the clips? I mean, I don't know what he's releasing. He's releasing, like, I don't think he's releasing anything edited. He's just, like, releasing some of the raw footage. Mm. Dude, you look, so, you look so good in this, Ryan, though. Which part? Just you sitting in the chair. Oh, the cool. Being interviewed. That's a first. Yeah. <laughs> what are you wearing? He's rocking some. Dude, look at your hair, right? That's fresh, man. Huh? Right? Yeah, some yeah, custom, you, custom ones there. Hey, you remember this one? Alex sent me this one. Oh, the chef. The cleaver. I think you just showed him one of those jerseys. It's got the cleaver. Yeah, there it is. Damn. You remember that day? Uh huh. They made I me wear so, the stupid purple so jersey like, and put me in the, the very far back of there, like Oliver in the I very front. I have one of those purple Yeah, I know. And then I was like no, back, totally about. in the back, totally out of focus. Yeah. yeah. We thought we were. We, we thought we really made it big, king, king dogs, amateur. Oh yeah, um, uh, I'll bring them by. I don't know. And uh, we went and did a photo shoot downtown. You'd recognize the spot. It's like right where the train tracks are right off of. Uh, oh, right. uh, there's a brewery like right off of Washington. Okay. And uh, and they get us down there and they're like, all right, they're handing out all the gear. This is right when they debuted those jerseys. It was this. Um, he just showed us one of these jerseys. And uh, there was like a purple one. The purple was hideous. And and they're like. Okay, so here's everybody. Oh, yep, and they look at me and they're like, "Here you go, kid. There's, you wear this purple one." And then these purple goggles. And then they had me and Alex stand all the way in the back of this staggered uh, photo shoot. And then they turned the ISO all the way up or the f-stop all the way up. And then uh, we were completely out of focus. And it was just all of us standing in the front with the red. Like a redheaded stepchild. Yeah, we got we got hosed. I lost them. I never thought they were gone forever. Um. All right, guys. Well, I think. Uh, all right, I got a trivia for a headband. Trivia for a headband. All right. All right, let's see here. Let me let me pull up the chat. Kind of trivia are we talking about here? 
I think we played the trailer. It's like where the Faroe Islands are. All right. I knew it was. I just wanted to make a stunt for smart. Or a headband. Or a headband. First person to answer correctly. What skill does Ryan Greenspan have uh, that could be shown in the circus? Oh, that's easy. Fine. What skill does he have in the circus? Can you jump? Okay. Jordan? Yeah, okay, he got it. Can you juggle? Ed, yeah. Ed, M- Money Mike. Oh, Ed Arrayneu. No, Ed Arrayneu is on top of on mine. Dang. Okay. Anyway, you write it down. Okay, I got another one. Dang, everybody uh, knows you juggle. Can you juggle more than Okay, you what, what more headgear percent. did Maddie wear when he's playing paintball? Oh. You have to be specific. I like how someone said uh, lion tra- uh, taming. Mixed needles. <laughs> D's. A yes. hat is not good enough. Curved bill hat. Ooh, that's so it. Yeah. Oh, Ryan Moffat. Moffat. Does... I think it's Moffat. Moffat got, Pedro, Moffat Moffat got, got first. Moffat scarf backwards hat? No, the curved bill hat. What's a scarf? A scarf that goes around your neck. I mean, I would wear a bandana around my neck occasionally, but... Really? Oh yeah, he did wear like a little yeah. uh, bandana around his neck. No, he wore the little the hat with the flipped up bill in the back so he could keep him low to the ground when he's running fast. Yeah, for sure, dog. Yeah, it's a spoiler. Yeah. Should Should simple, simple, Carol, simple Carol aerodynamics. Just height, Marcella. So who won it, right? For very physics. Sad. Yeah. What? Who won it? Well, Moffat said curved bill hat. Off the bat. What would you say? What what had? What, how did you describe your hat? I mean, I, a backwards. And then there's backwards. A, hat. a backwards hat would have been accurate, but like. Yeah, like, I mean, depends on the year, but when, yeah, a, a flipped up bill backwards hat would have been the perfect answer. Dude, you can't come in here and then throw some sort of arbitrary question out for a headband <laughs> and then ask us <laughs> after everybody's answered it correctly. Give me somebody something that's worth the over $100. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was going to say backwards hat with a flipped bill. Curved bill. Oh, and, and, a, and a headband underneath. Yes, that that would have been the most accurate description. Oh, well, then, then nobody wins because you just spoiled the surprise. Or give it to the first person that said flip bill backwards hat. You no, look no, at there it. There was you, a decent amount of backwards hats. I don't know if anybody said flipped bill backwards hat. Backwards red kind of hat. Backwards bill hat. hat. Mafia production. Not you didn't say backwards. Though. Race, dude. Okay. Is that what you're wearing? No cut. Well, then you can you can go ahead and uh, you can or go ahead. Or just go with Andrew Blee backwards hat. Wow. I mean, I have a kid, so I don't want it. Up. So it worked out. <laughs> Andrew Blee. <laughs> yeah. Working okay. It worked out. Well, yeah. Well, we you made a lot of you disappointed a lot of people like, as usual. We used to not wear. Well, fine. Do you want me to give another question? Yeah, yeah one more question. But think of, think it out really well right now. Right. Think it out. What was Maddie's like nickname? Thing. Like this is how we used to play paintball. Bro. Okay, well that's this is exactly how. Mate. Maddie is not the nickname. D. I have it in. It was I have on his jersey, jersey at one point. It's yeah, we already all, shown it. All the San Diego guys called him this. Oh, we already showed that, didn't we? It's right here. It's on the. There screen. he is. Authentic with Meg. No, Maddie. that's not right. Oh no, that's not right. R. R. Ryan Martin. No, that's oh. what Maddie's uh, wife calls him. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, oh! <laughs> oh, shit, dog. Dude, did, did you ever... What? Do you know how I got that, that nickname? I can't remember. So, Will Royo knew a drug dealer. From yeah. Long, there used to be a big drug dealer named Matty Ho in Long Island. Mm. And we played against him a game in, in, uh, in Toulouse where I shot a shit ton of of the Ground Zero players and won the game. And afterwards, props to Will Arroyo, but he was always a good sport, but even though he's kind of, he was a hardcore competitor. But afterwards, he gives me a high five, and he's like, dude, Matty Ho. And I was like, what? He's like, dude, if you don't know, Matty Ho, as these other dudes were walking, like European guys were walking by. And but that was like a big, he was like a big time drug dealer in that hat <laughs> that he knew yeah. that his dude was name was Matty Ho. So that's how I got that nickname. Yeah. Anyway. Dude, let's go. Only 87 likes. If we can get it to 100, I'll give out another headband. Let's go. Oh, that's easy. Let's go. 100 likes. Spin the wheel for a headband on 100 likes. Ooh. Look at this. I've got four uh, Fujifilm cameras I'm sending to uh, Revo. Hmm? What, the, what, are they, what crappy trivia do they win? No, they're going to take pictures and it'll be like four though. Yeah, pay, they're gonna take pictures for the next. <laughs> like Polaroids? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, I'm 
full you of never know what you're being doesn't serious. even know what Pharaoh Island is. He probably yeah. has no clue. Yeah. You're being so sarcastic sometimes. I have no idea. All right, I've got I've got a good trivia. We just hit. He's such a guy now. You can't even tell when he's being sarcastic. Dude, we're at 102 likes. Boom. 105. 102 likes, Ryan. Okay. Dude, I just got you like 30 likes. Thanks, dude. Um, are you gonna Are you gonna yeah. do the trivia or? Get a call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the phone with you. <laughs> okay. Um, what is uh, What's the question? Me? Yeah. <laughs> There's no question. I said spin the wheel for you. Did say spin oh, the spin the wheel? wheel? No yeah, way. All right. Cool. <laughs> I thought we were going to get some more trivia. I thought we were going to get some more crazy trivia. All right. All right uh, let's see. No, 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 no. It's all right. We'll just, this is, this is, this is better. We're going to do a um, trivia. Or, sorry, all right. What was, what was okay, Oliver's number before it was number two? Dude, Ooh. you're just giving me these ones. ones away. Yeah. Kind of easy ones. It's pretty easy. Here we go. Comments are rolling in. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, that? the first person to guess it got it. That's a shocker. <laughs> Jeez, Al. Sorry. <laughs> it's Drew. Okay, everybody who just won. Uh, and okay, I got a, I got a trivia for you. All right, so Kyle's got that jacket. He looks like a movie character from a great movie called Nice Guy Eddie. What movie was that from? Okay, there we go. <laughs> nice guy, Eddie. Um, and in the meantime, if you want a prize, uh, <clears throat> ooh. so we get a Bernie. Yeah, that's Alvarez. And Eddie yeah. Alvarez nailed it, dude. I was like, I looked at your jacket, and I was like, I'm a big Tarantino fan. Yeah, I was like, oh, All right. this is like, hey, okay, good, hey that's question. a good trivia question, though. Let's see, you put on Who's the back. Whose yes. brother played Buddy Nice Guy Eddie? What famous <laughs> actor's brother played Nice Guy Eddie for another headband? What famous? <laughs> what famous actor's brother played Nice Guy Eddie? What? Fa- I don't know the answer to this. So, oh, there you go. Seth Rogen. No, he's got the. Who's Who's that guy's brother? Mark. Mark. Oh. Lynn Johnson, Sean Penn's brother, Chris Penn, played Nice Guy Eddie. <laughs> Dude, look at that. How do you like that, Matty? Dude, and Nice Guy Eddie was a great character in Rise of War Dogs. Sure. Hey, uh, He's like, if you beat him long enough, he'll tell you who started the fucking Chicago Fire, but that doesn't make it fucking so. <laughs> Love that movie, dude. <laughs> um, Alex, can you text me your address? After this, your home address, not the office address. I need that for sure. something. Thank Why? You. We've got some extra sushi I want to send up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, one time. We're not icing it guy, up, though, bro. Then, Sorry. Like, three weeks after the tournament, and there's, like, a McDonald's cheeseburger shoved inside my loader. And then, and then another time, he sent me a package just with a Chipotle burrito. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and it was taped up, and you guys said it's like, oh, oh, I sent it to him like ground uh, to to his uh, to his like dad's his dad's <laughs> house. His dad only visits like like once every other month. Yeah, I check the mail there every two weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there was a Chipotle burrito up there. Oh my god, oh, that was good. And there they put a nugget. Would I put that chicken nugget? I don't know, but the chicken nugget did. Oh, you put it in my letter while I was playing. No, that was good. But no, chicken I put, nugget another, probably I put, stays I put, good I put for another one. Oh, yeah, nothing happened to the chicken nugget. It yeah, was that was in good. French fries. They're good for, <laughs> for at least a decade. Yeah. We got to get them with a hot dog. How was your day of fighting crime? Dude, if you guys all want to check something out cool, go, um, go look at Billy Joel's new video. This guy hasn't written a song in 30 years. And he just came out with this song, and the video is amazing. Rich. <laughs> we are the world. Have you seen that, Maddie? The we are the world thing. Turn the lights back on by Billy Joel. Uh, no, I have not. Have you seen the no, we are I, the world documentary? Real, really, it's pretty good. Have you seen it? Yeah, you recommended yeah, that to good. me, Maddie. Really good. Crazy. Right? Yeah, unbelievable what they did. Stevie Wonder's like, ah, I think we should uh, 
think we should sing this in Swahili. And they're like, yeah, they don't speak Swahili <laughs> where the famine is, bro. Like, what are you talking about? And then they waste all the time. It's great. That's a great documentary. Yeah. <laughs> we are the children. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, we're gonna uh, we're gonna shut it down now. Um, thank you, Maddie. Thank you, Chef Michael. Uh, Damien, you're a little late. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you for thank you. Sure. There's you're looking sharp too, too, Chef Michael. Hey, yeah. they, hey, look. This is the one you sent me. Sharp as your knife, baby. Sharp as your knife. That's right, bro. You absolutely crushed on the yeah, you, yeah, 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 you're really, amazing. Really good at your job. Um, I appreciate just, people that are really good at their jobs. <laughs> Thanks, and man. and right. just as a reminder, sushimi rolling sd dot com. If you guys are local and you want to just get dialed in uh, at your next function, like this, uh, or if you want to fly him out to Cabo to, 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 to create some beautiful sushi during the bachelor party or the wedding, or just for fun, hit him up. And uh, who was it? Uh, I think Fake Sports said you, you shot him in the face last weekend. <laughs> I'll make you some sushi if you fly me to Cabo. I don't, it, didn't, it didn't say his uh, real name. Uh, but it was his his screen name is Fake Sport. Oh, he was saying it right in the very beginning. He's like he blasted me last weekend. <laughs> That's fun. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me, man. I'll be be seeing you boys in Vegas. Oh, yeah. That's right. No, uh, maybe We're, we might do that three man tournament that they're dealing with up there. So uh, gonna go spectate and you know have some fun. It's Vegas. Hell yeah, you dude. know that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be rad. Oh, Damien, try these. I can't eat that. <laughs> You're allergic? I can't eat that. He's rebel, right? Yeah. They're, I do not believe anything you said. <laughs> <laughs> the chef gave it to you. Yeah. No. You're the master of like your pressure and like making people like no, eat there's shit no you're way. not supposed to eat. Yeah, exactly. I know better. Okay. <laughs> Ryan and I did have a bite of it though. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah we did. Do it right like, now. Look right here, look. I'm not wasting any any uh, stomach space on flowers. <laughs> Maddie's, all, Maddie's right here and needs to get one more in. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to uh, check out greatamericanpaintballmag.com. And uh, I think there's a link, a bunch of the links in here. Also, this is Brute. They have free shipping using code BUYBRUTE for 24 hours. Uh, and thanks to all of our fans and supporters and jt and core and empire gi sports gg sports gen x global you can show mine yeah, we didn't too. even show oh, yeah. what you mine's look sweet. at this is caught i'll never get rid of this one that, that one is sweet. actually cool with the real frame are you guys wearing those now kyle no no uh, we're just gonna do a big so jt build we got yeah, all of our jt goggles Dude, out here but we just pills, bro. i know i see them all no check this out check these out okay. they're brand new roman just made them it's got a milky custom Ooh. spray painted um Nose piece. Damn. Wait, he spray painted yeah. those? Gold with the Hormy ear protections. This thing is sick. That is and pretty then, cool. And then uh, this one's pretty sick too that he made. It's got the Dynasty camo with the Hormesis sticker on the side. I like those that lenses. Yeah, those those are the cool. those are the aged in Dude, a get, cigar uh, shop for get ten years. Right. You, you need these throwback uh, 2001. Being Oliver winning a tournament with the Swedes out in uh, oh, in Europe, man. bro. Yeah, those are legendary. And then he did these. So it's really subtle, but he's he is a hormesis pattern in that iridescent purple. Whoa. Yeah, and then um, the uh, the blue uh, goggle frame. Is he so, is he there right now? Dang, no, those are pretty left. cool. If you want to build, like he's the guy. Look what he did with this one. He put soft ears inside the hard ears, and when you try them on, it's like fits your head super snug. So, so you really, you if you don't want to hear, those are really good. Yeah. What? What? I can't hear. It. I can't hear what I'm saying anyway. How many uh, dudes on the left? Dude, no wonder you need a headband. I don't know. I was I was dogging him too until I put it on. It's pretty comfortable. Huh. Um, anyway. So how do we get a hold of Roman to do that? Roman builds. Roman builds. What does he uh, build? I don't know. Uh, he's on Instagram. I know that. Um, his Instagram is. Uh, let's see. Roman. I think it's Roman's World or something. Let me see. Hold on. <laughs> Remember Bobby's World. Roman around. R O M A N around. That's a good. That is. He must have had that for a long time. Yeah, no, follow him. He posts some funny stuff. And if you need a build, he's the guy. All right, Roman around. And Instagram. subscribe to uh, Great American Paintball. Yep. Do that for sure. We want to keep it alive. So um, <coughs> help us out. We're going to get it rolling, and you will not be disappointed, I promise. Okay. Thanks, Al. And then uh, follow uh, follow us in Sushimi Rolling. S D. C L. Yeah, do you see that? I can scroll from this side to that side. Can you guys see that? That was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot uh, for coming.
We're gonna have just Damien do it. Where's Aeor? Why isn't it working? Can you, can you give us one? There you go. 